Okay. All right, so I'm going to open the October 11th, uh, 2017 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. And I have to ask if anybody's taping the meeting. Nobody is taping the meeting, except for Lake Cam. Our first order of business is to meet with Jeremy Peck to discuss the Taunton Street culvert replacement. Hi, Jeremy. Great. So um, you want to just give us a little backstory on on this project? Um, sure. So as you know, I had submitted a uh, grant <coughs> to try to uh, get funds for uh, to try to design to replace the uh, culvert. Um, unfortunately, that was unsuccessful. There were a lot of applicants, um, from my understanding, and um, they just scored higher than, than Lakeville. So uh, mm -hmm. they were a higher priority uh, <clears throat> in terms of what they were looking for to actually award the, uh, the grant money. So, um, so now, you know, now it's basically, um, you know, we have a culvert, Pocoy Brook culvert crossing on Taunt Street um, that was deemed to be uh, in poor condition back in 2012. Um, there's a memo from Beta Group that was conducted back then. Um, so, they, you know, they didn't actually come in and do a structural analysis or anything, but they came in, um, you know, basically did a quick assessment uh, of what the conditions were and made some recommendations at the time. So, um, you know, they, the plan would, it would be to essentially, now it's, you know, maybe, you know, put out an RFP, you know, get an engineer on board. Um, design it probably follow the same recommendation that Beta had put together, which is a pre, you know the precast culvert um, that tends to be quicker construction because um, you're going to have a detour on Taunton Street um, could be you know a few weeks. Um, obviously, we'd have to plan this with school to make sure that that's uh, taken care of before school starts in the fall. So um, timing wise, you know, so it'd have to, I guess probably have to happen in August as well. Um, the flows are lowest at that time too, as well. So, um, okay. It's kind of a, a quick background of it. No, I appreciate uh, yeah. it because I, I just wanted to make sure that you know everybody understood the, the circumstances of it. Um, so, in terms of a structural analysis to determine how bad it really is, is that a necessary step in this, or is uh, that something you'd forego or recommend foregoing? Uh, I mean, you kind of just forego it. I mean, at, at this point, it would just be. Um, you know, removing the old, you know, you basically go, uh, you know, they'd have to go out and do a survey. You know, we'd have to do permitting as well. Um, mm -hmm. And um, you know, essentially just kind of design, you know, it'd, it'd be a structural design for the precast um, culverts, but they're pretty standard, so when it's not a, a difficult design or a complicated design by any means. Yep. Uh, you know, there would be um, some head wall work. So that there would be some design, you know, structural design with that as well. You'd, you know, probably just put back a standard concrete head wall, uh, you know, with wings on it, so you can kind of stabilize the slopes on each side of the culvert, downstream and upstream. So. Okay. Um, did we estimate was the cost two fifty, two hundred fifty thousand? Was that the estimate originally? I believe it was two seventy five. Two seventy five. Okay. Two seventy five and Jeremy's two thousand and. Yeah, 2016 it memo. It was 275, okay. And that's on the capital plan right now, right? I think we pushed it off a year last year, yeah, knowing that we didn't have the funds for it. Yeah. And we wanted to see if we were able to get any grant money for it. Okay. What does a structural analysis cost? I guess where I'm getting going with this is, you know, we know we need to do this, but is it um, something we need to do immediately, or is it something we could hold off on? Well, I mean, it's five years ago, which is determined. I, I mean, when they came in, they did a structural assessment. I mean, I guess it was a, a mini analysis of what what the condition of the culvert was, and they deemed it to be uh, in poor condition. So mm -hmm. it's not going to. It's probably in worse condition than it was five years ago. So it's of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I would certainly try to try to take care of the issue sooner rather than later. Because what you'll have is failure of the culvert, and then you're going to be dealing with a detour. It could be during the winter. It could be dealing during school time. So right. if we plan for this and, and instead of reacting to it, just kind of be proactive. And you know, we're, we're still kind of being reactive because the condition is so poor. But how how is Taunton Nav in that area in terms of you know where is it fall in our 
street analysis of what needs to be done to it? Is it in? It was paved in the last five or six years. Okay. So, so I mean, the no street no itself is work. in pretty good shape. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, okay. That doesn't. Yeah. I mean, we could probably what we would do is kind of stabilize a slope, mm -hmm. you know, with with riprap or some type of seating, okay. um, just to prevent any erosion. But um, yeah, that would all be kind of designed. It would really be isolated to where the with the color of the headwalls itself. would be. Okay. So you may have some drainage on the roadway that would be installed, but they basically just saw cut it where the limits of the work were, excavate it, and, and install it. Okay. Thank you. A couple of questions from from the tire on the road to where these 18 inch slabs are. This is how, how deep is that? About is that three oh, feet down? Um, four feet down? It's probably. They look a long way. Yeah, it's probably five to six feet. A long one. Yeah. No, do we yeah, have they're not too. They're not too high. <laughs> right, but but the depth of the road from the top of the road to the to the to where like the, the slabs the are. Wall. Yeah. It, what to the, actually the slabs of the culvert? The, the slabs of the culvert. Yeah, they're probably five or six feet. So okay. it's the it's uh, a decent size excavation. Right. Now Beta has a road plan, if you will. Do we have a, a plan or a listing of culverts within the town? Because what I'd lead to are there other culverts that are in worse shape? I mean, we somewhat picked it up because we were tiring the road, I think. And uh, so I don't know that there aren't five other culverts that are in, in worse shape. Yeah. Do we um, have a listing of them anywhere? We don't have a listing. I mean, the, the pavement management analysis that's conducted by Beta doesn't do any. Uh, they kind of look at, um, you know, uh, drainage on the street. Is it, you know, if there's an issue with a catch basin or um, flooding in a particular area, um, but they don't actually come in and do any assessment of the culvert. If I may, Aaron, several years ago when Chris Peck was here, the culvert on Pierce Ave was a problem. One on Kingman Street near John Beach's house was brought up, but I think in the meantime. Uh, Plymouth County Extension Service went out and cleaned up some of the um, issues there. And then, not that it's a culvert, but with the floods in 2010, headed out almost to Island Terrace. We had a lot of erosion on the side there, and I believe Chris did a temporary fix. Yeah, there, Those there, are the issues, yeah, the other was, issues that yeah, come to mind. Yeah, the Pierce culvert, there was some money spent. There, it, it, it was only because of the floods. Right. What happened yeah. was it overtopped the culvert. Um, and there was some erosion problems because right. is, now this runs right along the train tracks is that right no, right along the train tracks it's, no. no it's no, kind of down at a low point it, no. it, um, I, I guess if you went there's a there's a guardrail on both sides it's kind of at a curve uh, the number 46 Taunton Street right. yeah I think it's right so right. so if you if you look at it uh, yeah. the culverts a way down. Not that that makes an effort, but if the culvert was two feet from the top of the road service, you might have movement. But Jeremy's thinking that there might be five feet there. But but having having said that, we didn't put money aside for this at all. Not yet. Uh, no. Not yet. And so, when back to Aaron's point on the structural analysis. Does someone look at this and say, you know, I know they they said it's in poor condition. If we had someone else look at it and say, you know, it's been in poor condition for the last 50 years. So is it going to last 50 years? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. Anybody, nobody would make the recommendation that something in poor condition would last 50 years. Is, is gonna, right. I, I don't think there was actually a, a life expectancy put on the culvert, but okay. uh, I think the intent was to, you know, Fairly soon after the the memo was put together, was that you know it would be addressed? Yeah. You know, probably. No, and I think my thinking with really with having Jeremy come in was to kind of highlight this issue because I know that it's something he's asked for us to keep on the radar screen in uh -huh. terms of funding, and that we didn't get the grant we were hoping to get to offset the cost. So I wanted to make sure that we had a conversation right. relative right. to being aware that this is a project that we should. Uh, have an eye towards funding. What did they mean in the in the brief explanation? They said that there were upstream 
golf courses, if you will. What what difference does that make? Uh, I, I think, I, I I think what he was saying, it really. wasn't really a critical area, but, you know, for. Uh, uh, I didn't actually get too much detail other than that email. Right. No, I, I, actually I, I didn't know what he was stuff. driving at, so what if the yeah, golf I, course upstream? Who cares? I think it was just the impact that it may have. It could was just a golf course as opposed if to... the road collapsed. Home. Yeah, well, the road collapsing. Uh, <laughs> my understanding, there hasn't been any uh, failure of the culvert, where it's over, obviously overtopping the roadway. Mm -hmm. So oh, right, I, I think right, that right. kind of partakes into it. So, right. And if that ever did say back up, that... It's a golf course that's going to be flooded as opposed to Residential. thousands yeah. of people. Okay, so it had uh, something density. to do with the flood. I guess, yeah, well, density. Residential density. density, density you know, okay. Yeah. okay, okay. Okay. I, I guess you can leave it on the radar and leave it in the capital plan. Don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, there's a lot of things that, you know, as we look to how we fund and finance our roads and all of the structural components that go into them, where they kind of sit on the capital plan, and every year we just keep kicking yep. them down the road because we don't have the funds available to do the necessary repairs. And I think, you know, with something like this, it's just a consideration that if it does fail, then we have a ser more serious problem than what we have, and we're aware of, you know, the poor condition culvert at this point. So I think it's important as we kind of look towards our long-term mm -hmm. finances, of course, as we said, you know, we need to look at the roadways and we need to start really putting some money in there because we've just been kicking the can down the road with regard to some of these and it's going to cost us a lot more in the long run if we don't deal with it beforehand. Right. So that, that was kind of the whole point of, of having yeah. you come in, just and to just highlight to, this. Yeah, just to give you an update, we did just submit, uh, Beta just submitted for the Route 79 design, the 25 percent design. So. That's with Mass DOT now, so. With the roundabout? Uh, no, <laughs> no roundabout. <laughs> I know. We don't need to get into that. <laughs> it's, go, it's going through as a, as a signal. Okay. And, and do we need more money in that account to finish yeah, so that, that analysis? Which, and, an, which analysis? Well, the submission of 25% they did. But then do we have more money to spend before the state's going to do it, and how much is that number? Yeah. I think um, we so this, our right? contract essentially only takes us through the 25% design, which that's Mass DOT standard language for their first submittal. Uh, really, when you are uh, submitting the, the plans and the specifications, it's really more of like a 50% or 60% design. So we're probably about 60% way done. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be another couple hundred thousand dollars in design. Because we've already done 200, was it 278? Oh, 289. 289, yeah. okay. So, so yeah. and, that, and that doesn't even account for the land takings, right? right? Away, the right Which, away, yeah. Did Anything we get a number beyond? at all on that, um, what we estimate the cost to be? I can probably get the, yeah, I think it, we had gotten the, let me get the areas I thought you had asked for, my thing. Yeah, right? did, and I'm not sure did. that we got, like, I think the next step maybe might have been to send it to the, Assessors, was it to figure out exactly how much? Yeah, we, we would may end have, up. We're going to have a better idea of what that actual cost is going to be now. Okay. Because now we're submitting. Now we, have now the, we can actually look at okay. the plans. So you, you think how much more ends. money do we need beyond the 289? Uh, I think for the design, design is going to be about a couple hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred thousand. About or more. it could be more. And and maybe a hundred. But who knows what the number is going to be we for don't land know exactly takings? What, yeah. And and, and the we, right. Yeah, the right away. Did we unlock any of that earlier? No. No. Okay. No, okay. the 200,000, I'm planning on that coming out of my chapter 90. Which right. means so then we'll, we'll be delaying so we'll have, we'll the work on right. the roads that but we need to take care of. That's otherwise. A, that's the whole thing is we yeah. need to keep this project moving forward. Right. You know, as right. you can see, it's, right. but it's I a think timely we can process. Add, so it's we, can, we can add to that, I think. Right. I mean, that's that's the piece where we look at and say it's, what, $4 million that the state's throwing into well, it? it's six, so it's ten, a, No, it's actually, 14. It's right now it's around $8 million. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So what happened is when they did the, the project project initiation form for Mass DOT, came in around $5 million. And that was under basically assumptions that um, they weren't going to be required to have a sidewalk the full length of the roadway. Um, there was a lot less drainage because of that sidewalk um, it was been added. So a lot of the increased cost is the, the new sidewalk, more drainage, and the uh, um, now they've gone, gone out and actually done boring, so we know what the sub base is. Um, so there's more um, pavement reclamation, which is basically grinding up the whole roadway, regrading it. Um, so it's going to be more cost. Um, so, you know, 
we may have to look at other options to maybe phase it. I, I don't know how Mass DOT is going to work. Okay. But it's gone from basically five to five and a half to around eight. <coughs> All right. Okay. All right. Great. I appreciate your time and coming in and letting us know. Rich? Yeah, Rich LaCamera, 32 Old Crown House Road. <coughs> I'm sorry I have to bring this up, but uh, <coughs> five years since you're talking about drainage issues and so forth. On Old Potter House Road, on the bottom of the hill, at Heritage Hill, there's two catch basins that have caved in. And uh, what happens is that all the water coming down Heritage Hill Drive, as you know, is steep. Um, goes around, it goes to the one catch basin on Old Potter House Road, which is caving in as well. And the uh, pathway from the golf course, the water coming off the golf course is supposed to go into the culvert, and it's missing the culvert. So all the water coming down, Path, all the water coming down Heritage Hill Drive is going into this one case basin, and, and when you get an extensive storm, it flood, floods out. So you got to call the highway department to come out, you know, clean it up and so forth, which is costing the town money. Now, I've asked both uh, uh, the town administrator and Jamie, I've met with them a number of times uh, to discuss it, and every year they tell me they're going to do it in the spring, they're going to do it in the fall, and it hasn't been done. And they did two catch basins on the other end of Old Pot House Road. And I don't understand why these catch basins haven't been done. Because it is a safety hazard, number one. Number two, it's costing the town money when the road gets floods up, floods out, and the highway department has to come in. My next door neighbor, this whole yard gets flooded out on a septic system. And you know, this is a problem. And this is not a major expense to fix. And I don't know why it hasn't been fixed. So if you don't want to discuss it now, you can discuss it privately. I'd like an answer, please. Okay. No, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Um, I, I, I'm not prepared to discuss it now, That's but fine. I, understand. I do. Uh, I think that you know, anytime <clears throat> we have issues of that nature where it gets to a point where it's causing problems like that, we, we should have a plan in place to address them. So, thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, Jeremy. Thanks for your time. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> um, agenda item number two. We are meeting with John Oliveri to uh, uh, discuss hazardous waste insurance. Such a fun topic. So we had Nate, where is Nate? Do a storage tank addendum for environmental premises liability. That's one piece of this. This has been ongoing, and I think that. Nate did a lot of this work, which we've reviewed. We asked the question, why? I think it's kind of obvious when you read all this stuff yeah, what I think the why the, is. But the, the history behind it, and, and um, I think Rita, you would ask me to come just because it's to answer why. Yeah, to answer <laughs> answer why it's this a is coming big up. increase in our in um, insurance. Well, I mean, it's obviously it's up to the town if, they, if right. they want to do it. What happened was when you turned around and changed how you were getting rid of um, the material from the um, transfer station, station a couple of years ago, you were required by, was it Taunton, where you guys ended up Taunton bringing it, that so. they needed you to have the coverage in place, which the town and most municipalities, for the record, do not have additional pollution coverage other than what's um, standardly covered, which isn't... You know, and I can I can get into it a little bit if you if you want, um, which is standardly covered under the a variety of different programs that are available out there, for for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, municipalities um, are held to a different standard when it comes to pollution cleanup and whatnot than private entities would be, and secondly, municipalities have availability through I'm assuming it's usually the fire department. Um, they have a lot of equipment and a lot of what's needed to clean that up, anyways. The private firms would have to go out and, and sub out and hire someone else to come in and do that for you. So when this happened that you guys were required by contract in order to bring the material over to Taunton, uh, the question was posed, well, can't we just send a certificate out, proof that we have this coverage in place that they're looking for? And what's included under the standard policy uh, does did not um, meet those requirements. So mm -hmm. started talking with Reader and question which was a good question well what if we wanted to get that level of coverage on you know other exposures we have throughout town brings us to where we are now here's what the cost is if you want to do it um, in addition to um, the other tanks that are around town that, that have that exposure mm -hmm. the big difference um, would be that under the 
current existing coverage that you have, um, there's a much smaller limit in place than what you guys would get um, through purchasing additional coverage of 500000 And the only thing they cover is for the cleanup, and it has to be for a the spill has to be caused by a covered loss to begin with. So there was a fire and it caused the tank to, to leak or something, um, you know, a car ran through a building and hit the tank or the tank was outside the building and something, a vehicle hit it and got it's damaged. It's not if the tank just leaks it's through. It's not if the tank right. just leaks through. Which is what normally Which happens. Which is normally what happens. The additional coverage would provide that at a, um, a much higher limit. There's a $4 million limit and, and what you guys have in front of you, it breaks it down into different um, supplements of coverage that are, are given in addition to. So I don't know if you want to ask any particular questions. I mean, I can get into as much detail as you want, but in, in a nutshell, that's what the option is for the town. Again, it's, it's just the question was asked. Here's what the option is. Um, and like I said, I'm not, not trying to tell the town to get it, but not every municipi municipality has it, but it was a... So it's a... Four thousand dollar cost for a four million dollar aggregate limit. limit. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any questions of John while he's so here? Would this coverage cover any, say, for example, with Asawampsit, which has the only underground storage tank? So, in the event that it has been leaking for years or it hasn't been detected, does this coverage go retroactive to whatever it's done, and does it include? the environmental cleanup associated with yes. that as well? Yes. Okay. And that would be the same with any of the tanks. So if right. they're found at this moment to be in failure or <coughs> leaking in some way, shape or form upon, you know, signing on for this coverage, it would cover it regardless of the fact that it happened prior to Correct. the coverage being in place. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's a much broader coverage, which is why you would get the It's from the, the point of time that's discovered. No, one of the necessarily correct okay. right normally it wouldn't be but yeah <coughs> right in this well, case it's right. Be right to this basically. point in time we have things inspected at least annually yes pressure tested things okay. did, John did you have any questions for, for John no or? no no so it does it does the cleanup does it does it do a tank replacement John or just just really um, the cleanup I think no, it does. It, it does do um, tank replacement coverage as well. Okay. I mean, it's a very broad coverage. I'm looking to. Yeah, I, w I was. Actually, Aaron said something that triggered me to use my glasses, but that I think I can get by without it. But the pressure, there is a pressure test that's done. Um, to your point, which we do, that, on, we do that. We do that annually on Ass Swamps. It doesn't yeah. need to be done for all the other tanks because they're much smaller. They're above and, ground. And the visual above ground. Do, do we have the deductible detail? For it too. You do have the deductible detail. I need to put my glasses on for that one. It's three million nine hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All right, I don't need to put my glasses on. I forget which one was it. Sorry, when I was looking through this. Is it in here? I just didn't see it. I don't need glasses. <laughs> I think it just said to check on the deductibles, but I just didn't see it. <coughs> oh, no. We actually It'd be the thousand on that's on, yep, the on thousand our buildings. $1,000 deductible. Okay. And if I may, Aaron. Sure. I, I was reading your emails with Nate, too. So it turns out that we don't have to have the above ground smaller tanks inspected. Correct. They initially requested that, but through. Oh, now they've said no. Okay. Yeah, through, I was working with Nate, and through yeah. his effort, um, he was able to satisfy what they were looking for without the additional cost to have to do the, um, the pressure test. Do we know how much it would cost to replace the underground storage tank at Aswapsit if it Yeah, we have it somewhere. Failed? Or just in general, it's from 1988. It's in the plan. I don't know what it is specifically. Okay. It, it, it's in that, uh, oh, that Castle Bulls. Castle Bulls. I, I don't remember what it was. But at, at the time, at the, at the current time, it was mentioned that the expected useful life was 20 years, and we have it tested 
Yeah. Is it more than once, Nate, or is it just once? Once a year. Once. Once a year. We're almost at 30 years on that tank. Oh, no, no, expected moving forward. From the last moving inspection. Forward, from the last oh, from inspection. the last inspection. Right. Okay. Right. 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 Does anybody else have any questions? No, no. I think, I think it, That's it. answers our answers our questions. If you have any more, you can have Rita reach out to myself or someone in my yes. office, and we'd be more than happy to. Yeah, always happy to. Always happy to talk more to you right. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, John. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Can I just ask John a question? So the forty-two hundred, if the board decides they want this coverage. Will that be for the that's already for, into October? Right, that's, for, that's for an annual basis. So, you know, I know you guys tend to want to have everything on July 1st um, to match up with your fiscal year. Um, so we'd, we'd, I, we'd work with the carrier and negotiate to either turn around and do a... Prorated six months. Whatever. Yeah, prorate it, cancel right. it, or extend it out um, and, and turn it into whatever the difference is of 18 okay. month policy or mm -hmm. something like that. All right. All right. Right. Thanks. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. I get to go home now. 7 p.m. We're meeting with Nature's Remedy to discuss a letter of non-opposition or support <coughs> for registered marijuana dispensary or cultivation facilities. Folks, you know, to this yeah. must be front, them. Front and center. Nature's <laughs> Remedy. Front and center. So we have to, uh, we have your meeting posted at 7, so we've got a few minutes to, to spare. What we'll probably do is try to get through a few uh, sure. easy items here. How about number 5? This is a review and vote to award the sand and salt bids for 2017-2018 Highway Department. Sand and salt bids have come in. And we have the following recommendations. For sand, it's G. Lopes Construction, Inc., the price of $12.05 per ton. Last year's price was $11.15. Salt is none other than the Morton Salt, Inc. Price per ton is $45.86. Last year was $52. I'll entertain a motion to award those uh, as recommended. So moved. Any discussion? Or anybody want to second that? I can't. I need to abstain. I will second that. Any discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So in addition to this, Jeremy wants uh, recommends that we award a second bid for SALT to ensure that the town has a backup plan to get SALT if for some reason the Morton Salt Inc. company runs out. This vendor is Eastern Minerals Inc. at the price of $47.05 uh, per ton. Uh, so I will move that we award the second bid for salt as the backup plan. <coughs> I'll second that with discussion. Okay. So the, the discussion is we talk about, oh my God, Snowstones have come, everyone's out of salt. So in the contracts, I want to understand what language we're putting in there that to guarantee us. the delivery. That is, if you don't deliver within X days, we have a right then the to contract call is null and void. Well, I don't think that it's null and well, void, you, but we have the right to go to... Um, and who pays the difference? Oh, I don't care. We always have the right to go to somewhere else. But does someone pick up the difference? So I want to make sure we review the language and what's our rights if they don't deliver. Because they always deliver, oh my God, we can't give you, we're going to give it to the highest bidder. Then you get into that. So that's been an issue on occasion. Certainly last year was not an issue. <clears throat> it was no. Is that something you're comfortable uh, yeah, yeah. getting? Yeah, yeah, after, after the fact, but I want to. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a great point because if in the event of a breach, what are, what are our remedies that right. we have? So. Right. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All right, the motions carry. They're unanimous. Is he that I abstain from both? Yes. Good to you. Abstain. He uses molten salt at home. <laughs> when it rains, it pours, right? <laughs> I, uh, yes, I, I like sodium. <laughs> it is 6.59. I am patiently waiting for it to turn <coughs> to 7 o'clock. Do 7. It is 7 o'clock. So agenda item number three is to meet with Nature's Remedy to discuss a letter of non-opposition or support for a registered marijuana dispensary or cultivation facility. So we have some folks from Nature's Remedy here this evening. We were provided with information from them prior to the meeting, which outlines the details of their mission statement their vision for their company. Um, it had a breakdown of the executive management team. <clears throat> it had information uh, relative to the application process that they're following under the Department of Public Health with the Commonwealth. The proposed location is 310 Kenneth Welch Drive, which is located in our industrial zone district, which is uh, the industrial park. And then some other information relative to their security plan um, and some uh, medical marijuana information, general medical marijuana information, uh, an assessment of their opinion relative to benefits to Lakeville, and then um, a letter of support or non-opposition which outlines basically what they're looking for with that. Then a budget and then a, a community benefit agreement which is one that they've entered into with uh, a different municipality so that's the information we received good information at this point I'd just like to turn it over to you folks and you can just introduce yourselves and uh, tell us what you're looking to do okay well, my name is Bob Carr I'm president of Nature's Remedy of Massachusetts thank you very much for allowing us to come before you today for, uh, we're excited and really appreciate the opportunity um, we can do this uh, a couple of different ways and I just want to uh, understand how you would like us to proceed we can we can go through the presentation that you have and just quickly go through there um, uh, if, if you'd like uh, or um, we can just go introduce ourselves a little bit about ourselves and then just uh, sort of have it maybe as a discussion. Do, do you have a preference as to how you'd like us to proceed? I personally would rather have a discussion. I mean, I reviewed the information. We've met with quite a few groups at this point. I think we're kind of familiar with the business, so to speak, um, or, or what, um, what your process is in terms of what you need to do, you know, to get your, get your operation up and running. Certainly. So I okay. think you, would you prefer it that way, or no, just right? I, I prefer it that way. Just yeah. introduce yourself, and we'll ask questions. Yeah, we'll okay. Questions. And right. I guess I would just say the only you know piece that's different with what I see before us that we haven't seen before is really that you're also proposing the recreational component yeah. to this as well. Right. So mm -hmm. this is the first mm -hmm. time we've really seen the recreational component come before us as okay. well. So. All right, well, uh, we'll just do a little bit about ourselves quickly, and that's be because we are the, the boots on the ground, the people that will be there, that, and the people that will actually be working the facility. So I think it'd be a good idea for you to just have a little bit of knowledge of, of who we are, I think, right? Is that? Absolutely. My, my guess is how best to proceed. But um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm um, a Bob Carr, president of Nature's Remedy. Um, I started this application process a, a, about a year and a half ago. Um, before that, uh, maybe almost maybe up to three years ago, I um, I was looking for to get out of the construction company, which I had spent the last 25 years in. Um, I've built, uh, I've been in the commercial industrial part of it. Um, we had a concrete division. We did a lot of work in, uh, on that end, um, doing uh, concrete extrusion, which is a type of highway um, concrete work. Uh, did a lot of big box stores, that sort of thing. Um, uh, a lot of it down here in, in, uh, in the Commonwealth, as well as from where I'm from, New Hampshire. I'm originally from Wellesley. Um, so that's, and it was time for me to, to get out of that uh, for no particular reason other than it was just time to, to move on. Um, but my, um, my background being in construction and being somebody that, um, you know, dealt with plans and specifications and a very strict criteria for building, um, that helped me in this application where you have a DPH requirements that are e extremely strict. 
Um, so that's been helpful. But the, the, the way I got into this business was um, somebody had mentioned it to me once upon a time. So Maine has had their, their program up and operational since um, uh, uh, 1999. So they've been at it for a long time. Um, so I went up there, joined an association, association that actually had patients involved, and their, their program is much different than Massachusetts. You can't even compare the two. But what they had a caregiver program, the caregivers grow for patients, and it's a loose program. So it's kind of, it's the Wild West. However, they know how, they, they know how to produce really good products to help people that are really sick. And these are the associations that I joined and I was able to see firsthand. Uh, I, I don't use personally, but it was in there for, I was there for, for fact finding to learn. Um, and they had this at um, Humane Augusta, uh, a full program, it was a 10 week program. Um, and it was great. And it kind of, it, it got me up and going and, and the wheels turning. And um, uh, so I, I started in the, the Massachusetts program and um, and yeah, I have, have put together what I think is, is, is a great team of, of people, individuals with expertise. I will tell you that before I did the Massachusetts one, I, I applied for the New Hampshire program that was, that was um, uh, begun up in New Hampshire at, at there. And they only, they only, they, um, it was competitively done. So you had to write a business plan. So I sat and for eight months, I wrote a 400 page business plan on how to set up uh, marijuana dispensaries. They only chose three. I did not get the nod, but I got my, my PhD in how this whole process works. So uh, from that point on, I, I created, assembled this team from Massachusetts, and it's, um, uh, again, it, it feels like it's been dropped out of the sky. It's just, uh, just great people um, and great knowledge, great background. Um, not a whole lot of uh, consultants necessary. We have, we have just the, the internal horsepower. Um, and if we need help um, between our, you know, our backgrounds and where we came from and you know a little bit about uh, well, my partner here, John Brady, um, has done a lot of uh, work out in Colorado. So we have uh, a lot of references out there to pull from for, for information if, if we need it, if that's, if that's come to be. But we've got a great facility in Grafton, which we are all but ready to um, uh, begin uh, a process out there for a, a, a growing in a, um, dispensing operation we're going to co-locate there as well um, so we're, we're excited about that um, and we um, uh, it's taken us quite a bit of time to get through the design process but but in that period in the in the uh, six months uh, we've um, we've got ourselves uh, you know a, a really good facility and so a lot of that will come over into what we plan on doing here in uh, Lakeville so, um, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to, to John. Hi, thanks for seeing us. My name's John Brady. I've been uh, in the agricultural field for over 40 years. Uh, most recently, I was CEO of a company called uh, Plant Healthcare, which was a publicly traded biotech company out of London. So I was a CEO, I took it public in, in 2004 over in London. Uh, so I've been in the biotech uh, plant science world for over 40 years now. Um, I retired and uh, started to play golf, day traded, and um, my son called me up one day and said, uh, the cannabis marijuana world is exploding and, you know, we should start a fertilizer, biotech fertilizer company for cannabis. So I came out of retirement and my son and I started a company called RX Green Solutions, which is now going straight up and we provide uh, fertilizer, for lack of a better word. We don't call it fertilizer, but inputs, but they're patent protected type fertility products to increase the yield of marijuana, increase the purity, <coughs> and increase the CBD content, which is the medical aspect of marijuana. So I did that for three years. I built the first R&D facility in the United States for uh, marijuana. Well, I did it for two years out in Colorado and where we do research and development. I'm still part owner of that company with my son and he runs it now full time. And so we built the first R&D facility for uh, cannabis and nutrients and how it grows and how do we develop CBDs, what affects the THC, how do we grow, how do we increase the purity of everything. And so we did that and we're now breaking ground on 10,000 square foot facility, R&D facility. It's uh, really going very well. So I have kind of a steep knowledge in uh, cannabis and how to grow and how to, you know, what to do with it. And so Bob, my son was buying a house that Bob happened to be the builder of, 
before he before he had his epiphany and so um, he and Bob came to us and said I we we uh, I want to get into cannabis business and so when Bob uh, by the time Bob was leaving New Hampshire and getting into mass I was leaving my son's company because I was traveling to Colorado every other week and I'm 60 plus years old so I thought that's really not what I want to do in my life so Bob pulled me in and uh, you know, now I'm working 80 hours a week, but at least I'm here driving places rather than getting on an airplane. But uh, we're going to build a beautiful facility in Grafton, and right now we're very uh, we're very motivated to be here in Lakeville. We have a beautiful facility up the street. Um, the opportunity that that warehouse provides is really almost unparalleled in um, in Massachusetts. From everywhere we've looked to, uh, ideally suited for a cannabis operation because of Tom's having the cold storage there, the chillers are in place, all the things that are, mo the most expensive part of a marijuana grow is your air conditioning, your HVAC system, your chilling, your heating, and your dehumidification. And that is what determines uh, whether you have a good crop or a bad crop. And there's really no facility we've ever seen that has such controls and everything in place as Tom's facility up the street at the cold storage. So, um, we came in contact through a mutual friend, and we've been working with Tom now, and we're at the point where we really are very excited about building, and uh, it's, we're gonna start going for the building permit, provided that we get an opportunity here. Um, we are interested in recreational, but it's more recreate ability to grow recreationally. Um, if we're able to sell recreationally, that's fine, but the most important thing for us is that we have the ability to grow both medical and recreational at the facility. And why we brought this up is um, we just, if we're gonna sink four or five million dollars, which is what we're gonna put into that facility to uh, get it ready for growing, uh, the concern is we don't want to be, have to come back and say, by the way, we wanna grow recreationally on top of medically. And somebody say no, because at that point then we, uh, we already have a medical facility, and it's the same plants, the same tags. It's, there's not a, any difference in the plants. It's just that we have to make sure that we have that investment that we're able, because we have other towns in this area um, that are talking about allowing us to sell recreationally. So this is ideally located for the seacoast area to do that. So that's really the reason for our dialogue. We'd like to have a dialogue to dis, uh, discuss how you feel about that. Okay, great. I appreciate the information. And uh, the last one we have is new, new to our company, but is Ashley here. She was not on there, but Ashley is in charge of patient outreach and community outreach and an advocate for um, the medical side. So Ashley, you just want to briefly give why you're here. Sure. Hi, I'm Ashley. Uh, I graduated from Bryant University just recently with my degree in accounting and psychology. Went on to get my master's in accounting. Uh, started work, what I thought was going to be my dream job at a big four global public accounting firm, and I quit after five weeks. Oh, you, uh, out, you outlasted me by a... Uh, oh, no. Oh, really? Yeah, I think by like a week. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you understand that. Um, yeah, pretty much because my passion lies elsewhere, and that's with helping others, which ties into my to my role with Nature's Remedy and being a patient advocate. Um, when I was 16, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, which is a chronic incurable autoimmune disease that affects your GI system, your immune system, and can ruin your life, pretty much. Um, in 2015, I had five hospitalizations, two surgeries, uh, tried and failed almost every conventional treatment that my doctors tried to give me. Um, I couldn't walk, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, went through all that and had at one point my doctors look at me and say, there's nothing else we can do here, you're just going to have to live like this. So I didn't accept that. Obviously I went home, did some research and decided I was going to try medical marijuana. Um, I was hesitant at first because of, you know, the stereotype that surrounds it, but I tried it and it's been the only thing that's helped me get my life back and increase my quality of life. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm passionate about it, is I have personal ties to it, and I'm really um, passionate about spreading that word and getting the information out. And like John said, the CBD aspect of the plant is it's incredible, the medicinal benefits of it. I, I don't like the feeling of being high. I don't like the psychoactive effect of it. I personally use the CBD products, and I wish I had known about it sooner, that you can uh, utilize and, and reap the benefits of the plant without 
you know, becoming the typical stoner that the stereotype is. So I'm excited to spread that word that of what it can do. Great. Thank you. All right. So you've been taking notes here. Who wants to start? I take Ned Lens before the job. <laughs> All my notes relate to uh, projections and whatnot, too. But yeah. I think that, um, you know, it's been uh, yeah, typical CPA. Um, so, you know, as I kind of mentioned before that we haven't really had anybody who's come forward to talk to us about the recreational aspects of what they want to do. But yet, as John will probably attest to, that he has constantly been asking people, you know, well, why aren't you doing this? That's really where we want to see that happen because we really want to partner with somebody who we believe has a sound business mind, who really is coming into the business, who understands what they need to do to make this successful. Because if we're limiting the number of dispensaries, recreational, whether it's medical, recreational, that we can do um, through our local control, that we want to really work with the right people that are going to work with our town, that are going to be partners with us. Um, you know, we've identified the zoning areas that we find this to be acceptable in. And uh, again, this is probably our fourth applicant, I think, yeah. now um, that yeah. have come before us. And a lot of times we're really just looking for a little bit more information on what you believe your projected traffic impacts would be. I know that you have in here the number of patients per day. Um, you know, you have some information about the financials, but I think that we've always kind of looked for a little bit more in terms of, um, you know, some of the details when you think that you're going to be growing medically versus recreationally, you know, when you're going to see those upticks, um, if that's at all possible too. But I think at this point, uh, I mean, I, I'm kind of okay with the information that I have, but I would think that John might want a little Can bit more. Can I just answer your question? It's a very hard question to answer. First off, I, I mean, I'm kind of anal about all of this. I probably OCD if I were ever diagnosed. So it's hard for us to come here, and I'm very honest with you, to say we're going to have this many people, this many patients. It's a small town that we're pulling from, so we have to go to the outside communities. One of the things we have Ashley on for medical is her. we're going to be putting on seminars in lo all around the local communities to talk and bringing in doctors and talking about the benefits of medical marijuana. That having been said, recreationally never been done before here in Massachusetts. To get, you're a CPA, I'm a numbers freak. Where, where we stand on this is that we're going to sell every pound that we grow in Massachusetts next year recreationally because in the, we have 6.8 million people in Massachusetts. Colorado has 5.5. Colorado does a billion two in sales. 800 million of that is recreational sales. Um, they have a thousand dispensaries in Colorado. 600 are recreational, 400 are medical. If you peel out the medical and we just look at recreational, um, in Colorado they're doing 800 million recreationally in a, in a, in a state that only has 5.5 million people. We have 6.8. I have all these statistics I can send you. We, uh, we live and die by the numbers for us where we build our facilities. Uh, we're right off of 495 we will have the traffic that's going up to Cape Cod. So there'll be a lot of traffic during the summer that comes here and we're right off the freeway. We're, so if we're allowed to go recreational, we'll build it right at the site. We have it already determined where, that, where the dispensary would be. So if you fast forward in the state of Massachusetts right now, there are only 10, there are only 10 grow operations in the state. There are seven that are just about complete waiting for their approval. The average flower canopy size is about 15,000 square feet of flower or canopy, what you actually harvest. 15,000 square feet will yield somewhere around 6,000 pounds a year. So if you have 10 of those, you're going to have 60 to 70,000 pounds that we know. We're going to have seven more that are about 15,000 square feet again. So we're going to add another 42,000 pounds. So we're a little over 100,000 pounds. It's selling currently for $6,000 a pound medically. So you're looking at, you know, 60 million numbers in round numbers of uh, availability or, you know, so, or 600 million, excuse me. You have, you're going to have a dramatic shortage in the state because you're also going to need 80,000 pounds of um, 
of medical product to because we're growing at we have 40,000 patients we're growing at 2500 a month next year we figure there's some time in uh, late mid to late 2017 there'll be about 60 to 70,000 patients in the state here they average and consume about one pound a year the patients so again 70,000 pounds Colorado does a pound and a half per patient we're dialing it back in the initial years so you're going to have a demand for about 400,000 pounds in the state of Massachusetts, and we're going to make 100,000 pounds next year to 125,000 pounds. So at the end of the day, I can tell you up at this facility, we're looking at 30,000 square feet. We're looking at about 20, 16,000 square feet of canopy, 20,000 square feet of grow room, 16,000 square feet of canopy, we think we'll make six to eight thousand pounds out of that, and if we sell it at six thousand, it won't all go through that facility, but it will be distributed somewhere along this coast. We're we're looking at a at a large amount of money being in, but the whole state will be consumed. We'll be short for for sixty to seventy percent of so demand. Would this be your only grow operation? We have one in Graft. Okay, so you'll be growing at both locations yes. and selling to all three. Okay, right. We'll make all together, together in a first in a full year. Mm -hmm. The first harvests aren't going to be great because you have to pop from seeds, and the genetically your genetics aren't going to be right and everything. So our first full year, when we smooth it out between the two facilities, we'll be able to make some around fourteen to fifteen thousand pounds. Okay, and you have funding in place currently. We do. Okay. We're right now we have um, we've raised approximately we're closing on our next round we're raised about six million dollars roughly and we're going to need about 12 but we're raising about a million dollars a week and that's that's not our issue yep okay Great. yeah so some of those facts that you just talked about John that we certainly wouldn't mind having we, we somewhat do a comparison to the other uh, cannabis growers if uh, that come in about what their yields might be. Sure. Uh, so, but you a answered some of the questions. Most of the people were in about a, a 10,000 square foot. Mm -hmm. You'd have a 30,000 square foot at, at cold storage. 16,000 square feet of canopy. We'll have 10, 2,000 square foot rooms is the plan right now for flower. Okay. And you yield about 80% of that as canopy. The rest are aisles and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing I, I mentioned, which is just a private matter, is is uh, cold storage is in the food storage business, mm -hmm. and I was always somewhat concerned about cross contamination. Not my department. I just throw it out to you um, on that. Cross contamination of odor of, of, <coughs> of odors. That is, if we're going to have if uh, you're pressing uh, air filtration systems right. inside there that yep. basically are scrubbers. Um, it just it's interesting if you I could talk about this all night if you want to go offline on this but the cigar I live above a cigar store in um, in Portsmouth where I live and what they have is they have air exchange systems that scrub the smoke and smell out of the system cannabis does smell it has a strong pungent odor but we plan to have odor control systems inside the facility that will uh, clean the odor before it even goes to the outside. When you're air. producing your oils and, and heating them and things like that. That's really not the, where the smell is. The smell is the cannabis itself. Yeah. It's okay. a very pungent crop. Yeah. A lot of people are growing in town, so. Yeah. No, no, you drive by, you can no, smell No, some of it. No, only know some of it. On, on your forecasting, I have I a get little the medical bit, we patients. have a new one that, that I did you yeah, get? Yeah, the forecast that don't I, I, use I, I, are customers. I, I was a little confused of of that number being 50,000 when the forecast of medical patients was 1,500, and say, in the first because year. Because you have thousand. consistent repeat customers in medical. Once you sign a customer up, they come. So we're not right. double counting them, whereas recreational is they come, they buy, they leave. They right. come, to, and so that's a whole unique. Yeah. So, so the adult use customers, of course, I'm, I'm pointing to it as 50,000. I, I was a little confused in that number. I didn't know what that represented. But we don't have to tie up the meeting for that. Okay, that's basically how many individual customers come in and make a purchase. So it's unique customers. It's, it's, we'll it's, call that a unique customer that you don't see it's come 40 back. It's forty times again. more than medical. You figure it's a thousand a week. 
because they're unique customers we can't we can't anticipate that you get always the repeat customer okay because you can't depend on your business just from Lakeville to, to do that you're gonna have them coming off 495 yep. okay so, so those are unique whereas you're we're counting a medical that once he's a pa that person is a patient they will continue to come back so we don't count them every time they come in I, I think you've answered certainly my questions are the square footage and yields and things like that uh, community benefit agreements at what point in time do they get done because we haven't done a recreational one obviously the medical there's really nothing in it for a town on, on a medical basis it's really the recreational grow and in a percentage of gross sales of the recreational right that, that really when I say makes money for the town compensates the town absolutely for that uh, so um, do the community benefit agreements have to be the same town town by town? No. They can be different. They're negotiated. And it's different and when, and when do we, between recreational and, and we don't medical. We do that until this, this is all approved, if you will. Right. But I would certainly want to indicate that whatever the maximum benefits th th that the state allows us to do is where we would We're willing to pay. do the maximum that the state allows. So the state would allow 3% on medical, 3% on recreational, if we were to get both. So you would get a 3% of the gross revenue, mm -hmm. total dollar turnover, 3% uh, on medical, 3% on recreational. The state gives you 3% on recreational yeah. on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. And as part of the community agreement, I, and we don't have a defined amount, but the profits that are left over at the end of the year, we we're very we we're we're kind of like a B Corp company. We, we we're very big into charitable benefits because um, you know we've done well in life. I'm, I'm not doing this because I need to get a paycheck. I, I started on the medical field because my wife passed away from cancer and uh, was not a, had did not have access in New Hampshire to medical cannabis and so the, basically the chemo was what uh, brought the end of her life um, and so I was pretty passionate as Bob was on the medical side uh, so we have with our financial partners we have determined that we haven't decided on the amount but a certain amount of the profits at the end of the year will be earmarked for benefits to the community so if you need a ball field if the police department needs uh, something, a, maybe they need extra manpower to, if the, you're worried about the cannabis business, schools need DARE programs or something, uh, you know, uh, al drug and alcohol awareness programs. We want the communities to come to us and we're happy to participate in those programs to help the community. You, you gross, j just generally a, a round number gross of, of recreational marijuana out of the Lakeville grow facility three years out are we talking 60 million gross I'm I really it's <laughs> we got a business plan <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a business plan but I can honestly tell you I really don't know but you, it's there are not a lot of facilities right. obviously near here um, I would not be surprised to see uh, in our first year, a first full year of business, do $10 million yeah. out of that facility, and it will grow from there. But a lot of that is dependent on how many more. The state right now is capped recreational licenses at about 75. If they start to expand that, then I, I can't tell you. But yes, as long as it's 75, as yeah, long as it doesn't get diluted, that right. continue. Whereas Colorado has recreational has 600. Right. If right. you keep 75 here, right. this is... Right. But that hasn't lessened down. demand or, or the price, right? Oh, it's dropped precipitously. Yeah, it has in Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. Colorado. Yeah. Right, yeah. so obviously that... Empty store if, if the... Uh, right. The, does the... the Massachusetts... Our police chief, them. Frank Avalera, is at the end yeah. of the room here. Do you have any questions, Frank? Uh, uh, we spoke the other day, uh, kind of a lot of the security aspects are, are regulated uh, by Massachusetts anyways, and uh, mm -hmm. kind of went over what their, what their plan would be going forward if it was approved. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. Um, Good. Thanks, what do you Frank. anticipate for water usage or needs? I would assume you'd be, would you be tying into Taunton? What we'd use is um, your own filtration. No, 
there's supposedly a water tower that yep. Tom talked about in town. Yep. We just sold it to Taunton. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to Taunton. But the water's available. It's, yeah, it's Taunton. Yeah, the water's yeah. available, but yeah. what we have is we'll have a water recirculation system, okay. is that when the drip goes into the plant, it'll go percolate through um, the Rockwell cube that we use. We'll use a big Rockwell cube, about this big, for the plant to grow in. It'll percolate down in through and onto a metal table, and we'll have a drainage point at the end of that table. We'll drain that and we'll recirculate that water with the nutrients in it back through a cleaning system where we'll clean the soil out of it and we'll re recirculate that water and reuse it again. So we're not we're trying to use as little um, water as possible and as little as possible to go down the drain. Mm -hmm. So that's what our plan yeah. is right now. Do you have any idea how much do you, did you project the usage of what uh, you need I from could them? Get that Because I know that we need to We use about a half a gallon that. of plant a day, and so I would have to get you the plant numbers, but I can okay. do that pretty easily yeah. if you'd like that. Because we do have a cap on what we're, I guess, allowed to give for total gallons. I don't think we'd be hitting that mm -hmm. at all. But um, I don't know if they're allowed to sink a well out there either. You know, if they needed, we could probably sink a well. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. we're filtering the water anyways. Right. So, yeah. right. Uh, you have the right. equipment the, to the, do that. The water's hard here. Pull, them in, big right. pull the minerals out that yourself. That will uh, yeah. run through the water yep. through. Yeah. Okay. Water, I mean, is crucial to us. Good water, good water yeah. quality. It needs to be consistent. Sure. Right. The three things about it is we need good water quality and we need good, that's why Tom's facility is so beautiful. We need good humidification, dehumidification and humidity control because yeah. that's where your whole plant falls apart. Mm -hmm. Great. Any answer? My questions, but whatever more statistics that you quoted I will, earlier, I'll get all of that. I would be happy to take the water. Okay, and I'll figure out your water usage. Yeah. yeah. And, and would you like a? Would you like us to send um, our proposal for our host agreement to you? I mean, we have one that that we've used in in Millbury and Grafton. Um, and it's, that, it's got a language that's yeah, we, we, yeah, we have those. Oh, you do? Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, this is also pre yeah. um, recreational. Laws coming right, out too. So. Right, right. It's really the uh, recreation. Right. We understand the medical one. It's really the. And, the and you'd be leasing from Tom. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's really the recreational one. I mean, you get into payment of taxes and so on and so forth. Well, he already pays taxes, you know. But you got personal property taxes. You got capital improvement and so on and so forth. But. Oh. Right. But, uh, some of the host agreement doesn't really apply. Right. Right now, companies are set up as a not-for-profit, but now that right. the state has allowed them to switch for for-profit, everybody will be switching to for-profit. We see it already, cha name changes, all that right. taking place. So, so we'd have two different agreements, I think. One for medical. We have one that has both of them. Another both. town yeah. has asked us the for the same together. thing. Okay. Okay. So we can get that to you. Yeah. yeah. That covers both. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Right. Just a quick question, uh, actually two questions. Uh, first question is, is the regulatory overlay of this state mandated? And uh, if so, what role does the local community have? So what, what regulatory guidelines are we adhering to, just for my own information? Our guidelines come from the Department of Public Health right now. And, and so they, um, their guidelines are typically more stringent than the local community. However, the local community has, has a big input into, into what we do, how we do it. Um, you know, even before we begin, um, we'll have department heads, we'll have um, chief of police here come in and go through uh, everything, all our security protocols, um, and, and that's after the DPH has gone through and then everything. But they're, um, their guidelines are strict. I mean, you would think that we were producing plutonium in this facility um, between uh, vaults, um, uh, uh, cameras, security cards to get through doorways. Um, only certain people are allowed through particular doorways. Um, you know, and, and it's, um, yeah, and at, at, at nighttime in the dispensary, everything that's that's on the shelves gets locked into a vault. So if somebody wants to break in and steal something, there's, there's nothing to take virtually. Um, and in the dispensary as well, if people, um, before even people can, can enter the building, they have to show their ID card um, that, that they were issued by the Department of Public Health outside. And then the next step, they go into a vestibule. That's a, a, a five foot by five foot uh, box, pretty much. And 
they're in there alone and they're in there with um, there's uh, a glass between them and the receptionist they hand in um, their card from the DPH and their um, uh, their mass license and two forms of ID and then they're they're allowed to proceed into the dispensary so um, yeah it's 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 so strict it's so so heavily um, guarded fortified and the other thing too for the protection of, of, of people that are using our products it's all seed to sale it's vertically integrated so anything that the patient or a person receives um, um, has, has a barcode on the packaging and we can they can identify where that came from um, and exactly what's in that package and that's all um, and the DPH will do um, uh, um, quality control continuously come in unannounced so and that leads to my second question. You mentioned um, this is Dick Scott, by the way, for the record. You, you mentioned says odors, name. and the gentleman discussed what mm -hmm. controls he had in place to control it. Um, would enforcement of that be under the state jurisdiction or the building department? But let's just say somebody drives by and they smell an odor, and they call the company, uh, and the odor would be addressed internally, hopefully, but if it weren't addressed internally, where would that enforcement come in? Locally. Okay, so it would, yeah, be, would that be Board of Health or? Not no, sure. No, not sure. Maybe, does it control maybe even you, each town can be different. Yeah, sure. It, it typically starts at your building department. They're the ones that are going to get the complaint. It's a nuisance at that point. Yeah. Um, somebody calls, they complain. It's, it's our building commissioner right oh. there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's, right. it's probably on your doorstep. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, uh, he's dying to uh, Funny, when the have more, place more to do. Because the order, to answer a little bit of Dick's question, a point is that if you go to the medical facility on Chestnut Street, I think it is, in, 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 yeah. in uh, Brockton. Uh, the odors outside are, are pretty tremendous at certain times, depending on the particular product that they're making. Uh, the, the companies around there aren't concerned about it, that they talk about it about it a lot, but there are outside odors that we have to make sure we're addressing. Mm -hmm. We agree. And uh, that, and that I think, is... is is key to it when I talk about cross contamination of odors in a we'll call it a food processing plant. It's not my business. I only want to just point that out. I understand the controls of humidity, uh, small rooms, so there's not cross contamination. But the outside odors are, are always a concern. That is, uh, no one wants to drive by and have lots of odors. And there right. are odors at the facilities that we we've gone by. Have they put in odor control systems? Well, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't you tell you. Ask. No, I, no I, right. Couldn't tell you how because they Because of Grafton, uh, we, we addressed this problem, or not a problem, but this concern early on mm -hmm. was that that was one of the first things when we were talking about yeah. building was how do you, even though we're in, way far out in an industrial park in Grafton, we're not near anything, um, it still is a concern. So we have odor control systems that are in place. Right. So those we'd really want to be on top of so that Absolutely. we don't create this nightmare for our, for our building enforcement uh, person, Nate. We don't want to get into that. And and that's a, that's a concern for the... Uh, the Brockton one's kind of been a little mini industrial area, print shops next to it and things like that, all businesses, but they all say... Certainly stinks like hell up there. Especially if you have uh, humid, highly, a high humidity day, it keeps everything yep. down. I think the um, what you'll find with us, and anybody can tell you this, is we're, we feel we're guests here. We're being invited in. We're bringing in something that is can be controversial. And uh, we want to be good neighbors. And so if there is an issue, you're, this is it. You're, you're looking at the team, the guy, the people that run it. This is not some big corporate uh, conglomerate. This is the Bob and John show and we're expanding. We now have five employees and we're expanding as we go. And uh, so you, you'll deal with us. You'll see us in the grow. You'll see me in the grow a lot. That's my job. And you'll see Bob in the dispensaries. You'll see Ashley, all of us. So if there's an issue, we need to know and you know, it's our job to work with you to rectify that. Well, Oda's outside the building certainly are, are concerned. Okay. Mark. Yeah. In, in anyone else. And I can't remember. Is it 500 feet from a daycare center? Or that's what it is. It's yes. Yeah, yes. much smaller than. Okay. 
Just so anywhere where children can congregate, so that that, mm. that 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 could be a driver's education school. Just a quick comment, just to piggyback on what you said, um, that local agreement might be a good place where that's emphasized, but it might not be bad that there be some type of penalty clause with some clear uh, ways of enforcement. Whereas it, it doesn't have to be. Punitive. I'm not talking twenty-five thousand dollars a day like EPA, uh, but anything that has a financial tooth helps the O and M plan that's written as part of their operation. Mm -hmm. So that if you have a nuisance complaint, there's a procedure that says how it's responded to, and if it's not taken care of for the sake of argument in thirty days, then some kind of penalty kicks in, and that's again right. to be preventative so everybody. Uh, is protected. Yeah. I don't know as if we can do that. I don't think, uh, I mean, we can't just have a specific penalty for violation of a, of a ordinance or bylaw that is specific to one person in the town. I mean, is it? I, I <laughs> think that's one of the reasons why you have to have. The process of law, so to speak. Well, I think you get the 14th it, it's a, Amendment. It's better there. to start <laughs> with stringent. You can't discriminate yourself. on one business it's versus another. It's not discrimination. Mm. It's a unique business. I, I'll give you. A, I'll give you two. I don't even want to go down this road. I don't even know why I even. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> can't, 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 can't but is it? No, I appreciate to to speak about odors. I, I don't even want to go down this road. I apologize for even responding to you. I I, really I, don't. I think we, that's. I we, think that's. We've got to keep cracking on here. I think that's here. free speech. No, it isn't. If this is a it public is. meeting, and you have a right to speak if I recognize you as a chair. And you gave me the okay, floor. Okay, but I'm saying enough's enough. Thanks. Um, folks, I, I really appreciate you coming in. Um, does anybody have any other questions for them before we make a, a move here? No. Okay, so <clears throat> I will uh, entertain a motion then to approve a letter of non-opposition uh, for Nature's remedy. Second that. All right, so that was You're my motion. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was gonna fine. I was gonna say so move. Okay. That's fine. So move by Missy, I'll second. Um, any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. The motion carries, it's unanimous. Okay. Thanks for coming yeah, so in. Can I clarify that? Is that a letter or not opposition for rec and medical? Yeah. I, I know that in Correct. the past yes. okay, thank we you. did two set oh we did well, cultivation we do and rec and Dispensary. dispensary, but we'll put all of that into the same letter. Thank you. And thank you very much. Thank I you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for Excellent. coming in. Can I, if anybody has any questions in the town, we, we are happy to talk to the citizens of the town that mm -hmm. want to know more about what we're doing, who we are. We're always available, um, and we'll make ourselves available. Do we have your contact information? I think you have yes. our contact information. You did me. Yes. Okay. So we're happy if anybody has any questions and is curious yes. about who we are or what we'll do, we're more than happy to Great. meet with them and, personally. And that additional information you can just follow to, to read. It. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nice meeting Thank you. you. Okay. Agenda item number four. <clears throat> agenda item number four is to meet with Kelly Shumway to discuss the application for the junk and dealer junk dealer and collector license. Hi. Hi. Are you Kelly? I, I am. Nice Thanks for you. coming in. Thank you. Nate was able. Uh, I have Nate's memo. Okay. Inspection. So, Kelly is with uh, TKO Restorations and Treasures, and they're requesting a junk dealer and junk collector's license for the property located at 290 Bedford Street, the former Sedell's location. Um, so we had some information provided to us, the application, as well as our uh, town's general bylaw specific to the junk old metals or second-hand articles license that uh, she is requesting. Nate, our Director of Inspectional Services and Permitting, provided us with uh, a memo dated October 11th that says, I have reviewed the application for the junk and dealer and junk collector license at 290 Bedford Street. The subject property is approximately 1.68 acres and is located in Lakeville's business zone. It is my opinion that this is an appropriate use for the zone. And then he uh, talks about the 
uh, I'm sorry, providing the applicant adheres to the junk, old metals, or secondhand articles section of the Lakeville's general bylaw attached, I recommend the issuance of a junk dealer and junk collector's license at 290 Bedford Street. And then he's attached the bylaw for us, as well as a photograph of the building. That's it, right? Okay. All right, good. Uh, all right. Did, does anybody have any questions for the applicant? No, only are the sales going to be inside the building, or are you going to be doing stuff outside also? Um, mostly inside. Okay. Maybe in the good weather, maybe a little bit of outdoor underneath where, like, uh, the drive through is. You're, okay. Contained you're, into you're that overhead. area. Yes. You're, okay. Just okay. in that area, not in the general parking lot. Right, right. This, this is somewhat different than what we usually issue. We issue licenses to people that don't clean up the yards and we stop doing it. <laughs> no, this is like this refined is and right. This, this is not. Yeah, this, this right. is a different right. business. This it's, is a resale. It's kind business. of the it's wrong like a, name yeah. for the no, that was, right. it is. Just, <laughs> just my question was, are you doing right. this outside? Use... Not really. Outside, bring it back inside at night. Right. Just Perfect. a special thing, maybe. That's it for me. Okay. But I have no questions. Mitzi, do you have any? I don't. I mean, I think that it's just, uh, I mean, some of the onerous requirements on you that you have to keep a manual book of everybody that buys something more over 500 you know, this $50 just in case oh $50 yes yeah. just for so, we do that anyway okay so you have it through like your POS system or right. something anyway so right. yeah you can just produce it that way um, which is good so we don't actually purchase anything in there anyway okay it's all done privately so it wouldn't really be happening in there at all okay yeah mm -hmm. I Gotcha. It's not something that we people walk in with items and you buy them from them. It's not like that. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. I have no other questions. Okay. I will entertain a motion that we approve the junk dealer and collector's license. So moved. Second. For uh, Kelly Shumway and TKO Restorations and Treasures. Is there Gracie a date? Oh, to expire on May 1, 2018. Is there anything else we need to add? So does this get approved every year? Yes. Okay. Yep. Did you put one in there? No. Okay. So we do not have one to sign. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries. It's unanimous. Yep. Welcome to business. Thank you. Lakeville. Thank you. <laughs> I'll have uh, Tracy. Meeting, yeah. <laughs> I'll have Tracy type up uh, the permit. And I just come pick it up. Yeah. Okay. I'll have her call you. All right. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Number six. Um, vote to approve request for haunted house committee to place signs on Southworth Route 79 and Precinct Street Route 79 intersections. We had discussed this back on our September 27th meeting under new business, but we did not formally vote to approve the request. The request, as such, I move that we do so, allowing the um, signs to be located as they've requested. Second that, I guess. Any discussion? Did we put any consideration to make sure it's not within the right of way or the this line no, of sight they, they and all, all right. of that the, okay they, they seem to put them in the right place okay. they got them right all right excellent all those in favor aye aye okay agenda item number seven this is to ratify vote of september 27 2017 to appoint maria peroni martin Maria Martin, a.k.a. Maria Martin, <coughs> as an associate member of the Community Development Committee. So this also was brought up under new business and it was not on the agenda, so we're just ratifying this. Uh, so I move that we appoint Maria Martin as an associate member of the Community Development Committee. Term. Operation July 31st, 2018. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. All right, that one is unanimous as well. Um, okay, so this is, did Frank leave? Mm -hmm. no. I thought he was hanging around for this one. I was
who's going to make him do it, or ask him to do it, I should say. He has a gun. I can't really make him do anything. <clears throat> I am pleased to announce that the Layfield Police Department has created an elderly affairs liaison within their police department. Emily Ann Mello has been appointed the department's elderly affairs liaison officer. <clears throat> and uh, Frank wanted us to announce that. So I think this is, this is quite a position, and I want to talk a little bit about this, because uh, I think Frank included this for me to not necessarily read it, but maybe just kind of touch on some of these these um, aspects of what the Elder Affairs Liaison does. Um, this is the person who um, is a mandated reporter under Mass General Law for elder abuse, the disabled abuse, child abuse, also respond, responds and assists other department members when requested regarding investigations regarding those types of activities. Um, it also, she's involved with Registry of Motor Vehicle driving infractions regarding elders um, and working with them, working with elders involved in their families to resolve situations relative to their inability uh, to no longer drive, which I think is an important thing. Um, and, and really, generally, I think Emily Ann Mello was, was chosen to do this because she's really been involved with the Council on Aging and, and um, I think that this is just an extension of her interest in that regard. So I'm really excited that, that they did this uh, over at the police station. So that is that. <clears throat> and item number nine. The Board of Health has requested that, of, of course, I can't read this last name. Podelsky. Podelsky. All right, take two. The Board of Health has requested that Lisa Podelsky be appointed as Assistant Animal Inspector for a term to expire on July 31, 2018. We received a letter from Jared Darling, who's our Inspector of Animals. Um, and he proposed to divide the animal inspector's position by adding an animal inspector to assist. So that is uh, Lisa's, uh, Lisa is part of that request. If I may say, Aaron, too, mm -hmm. Lisa covers for uh, our animal control officer. Uh, she's there as part-time animal control officer in Freetown, mm -hmm. and she is very good and she is very responsive. Yep. So um, David Freights thought that this was a good appointment. Okay, good to hear. Did you have any questions? No. If, 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 if it was more money, it's almost like a, to me, a post a position, a post a job. I don't need to do it for this because she's already mm -hmm. somewhat acting in in a capacity related to it. But I don't, I don't want people to come in and say, here's the person without uh, posting it. It's okay. When I say it's okay in this case, it's not a lot of money involved. But uh, it's like you do half the job. When Jared was hired, he was hired to do the $6,300 in total, and that's digressed into mm -hmm. I'll do this half, you do that half. And uh, it's okay, but but uh, if it was more money, I'd say we should be posting. And I guess this is one of the uh, positions where it's by statute you have to have an animal inspector. We don't even have it on our wage scale, so it is a good point, John, that we've just never posted this position. It's um, but going forward, right? You, we might want to entertain that. I don't need to do that yeah. at this meeting, but I'm just throwing it out that. Uh, if it was some other job, we'd be posting it. But she has an involvement now, so I'm not. Why don't we hire the nurse normally? Is uh, that right? right, but yeah. is that? <laughs> well, we reached out. That was another hard position, a difficult yeah, position that's to one fill. Where it's not even worth the money to do it. Right? Oh, that, yeah. that was like insurance uh, and everything. Come in like uh, yeah. twice a time to. But the but how do they cancer. find the person? 
I mean, was that something they post or they advertise I, for? I think, or was that just if I remember, it like a school well, assistant nurse? We tried to you, yeah, have the school, school nurse. nurse do it, but it was um, pretty much talking to other boards of health of who they used to yep. bring in for a nurse, and it yeah. was more or less word of mouth. Yeah, okay. No, I mean, you, you raise a great point, yeah. but I, I wonder if, if this is... I'm, a, I'm okay like with that or right I'm okay with with this it's not a lot of money but it's like someone coming in saying well I'm gonna have them do half this job and here's how much we're gonna pay that I don't think that's the right way to do it next time around right okay so the Board of Health is really already uh, no they need our approval? you're they the appointing authority officially now right. Okay. Right, the governor but, has signed. But they're good with this, right? Yep. They're, yes, they were asking Obviously. you to do it. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I'd like to take a motion to that effect. So moved. I'll second. All right. So this is to appoint Lisa Podelsky uh, as assistant animal inspector for a term to expire on July 31, 2018. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. It's unanimous. Uh, number 10. The Board of Health has requested an increase of their septic betterment account by an additional $50,000. They're requesting that this be on our special town meeting warrant for November 13th. So the Board of Health has a program in place where they can loan money for septic repairs. And they want more money in the account for the, the sake of doing this. Now, Rita's looked into this process and learned that it's a little it's a, more to it than a just long that. process. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes, I called our um, financial advisor because I know that I did the two loans that we have, the 100000 and the 300000 it's um, when I was treasurer, so I know the undertaking. But it starts with the Board of Health reaching out to the DEP to try to get into, um, now it's called the Clean Water Trust Septic Repair Program. Mm -hmm. And then after the Board of Health meets with DEP, they reach out to the Clean Water Trust. And I gave you samples of the votes from our previous two loans of bonds and what they'll do is we can do a temporary borrowing uh, until the trust puts us in a pool with other communities and go out then they go out to bond for it so I know that they asked for only fifty thousand dollars personally I would recommend you know at least do the hundred or two hundred thousand because right now they have uh, about eighty nine thousand left because what the town accountant did, we also have a $50,000 grant that we received. I gave you that. Uh, mm -hmm. Todd has combined the what's been paid off on the water pollution abatement trust loans with the grant. So even combined out of the 350, we're down to 89,000. And typical septic systems now, I think they have two applications in front of them, 40,000 each. Yeah, they're like thirty for grand two for of a them. basic yeah. one. Yeah. Right. So right. if you have right. anything that's specialized, right. it's down on the water. There's there could be could be a lot more. So I, I'm not quite sure if the board of health wanted the town to just borrow and not go through that plan uh, and put that on the special town meeting. I, if they want to go through renewing the septic repair program, I would say um, it would be could get it ready for the annual town meeting. But I would recommend that they do a larger amount. Well, why would we go through the state anyways, and why wouldn't we just do it on our own? Is there an advantage to going through the state? Zero percent interest. Versus two. We can charge up Versus to five. Right. Um, they, and they do charge interest on it. Right. right. On the ones that we have, they didn't. Okay. okay. They have the option. We then. charge five percent to the homeowner. Right. And that goes back into. The pool right, of right. funds. That's right. Okay. That so was we mine. must have, if we borrowed three hundred thousand in the past, two hundred and one hundred, we must have two hundred and a hundred and two hundred 
$220,000 worth of attachments on people's oh, homes, yes. I would think. Um, yes, we do. A, and every town meeting, we re-vote any loans that got paid off right. during the year. We re-appropriate right. uh, right. re it. Right. Well, if this is at zero interest and we can borrow at 2%, I'd still like to do that through the state. Mm -hmm. But if we need to fund it, we could fund it while someone's going through that program if, if we run out of money. Is that allowed? No, you mean to pretty much say that can, can we we'll borrow to put it into this fund pending, you know, provided somebody's looking to uh, access the funding now pending a, it going through this how program? How long, the state, how long do you think the process might take? Really? Uh, well, I would say it would take months. Well, you know, we, should, we uh, should start that. But, and but we don't want to turn people away. Well, we still have eighty-nine thousand yeah. dollars in the existing yeah. account, yeah. so I think that if right. we, if and we, we can, and we charge five percent. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we can get it on. Her. And the loan payments are made from their betterment payments right. to us, so it's not right. coming right. out. We're but not paying it, for I, it out of our operating. But budget. the answer, it, I, I don't think right. fifty thousand dollars is enough. Is that is adequate? Right. So no, I agree. Because it's we're going more. through the process now of trying to get people to be more compliant. Yeah, even if, if it's will. 300 you know, meet with DEP, find out how much. Uh, I know with the new uh, water system going into Clock Shores, the Board of Health is concerned that right. they're going to we'll need, need to more. upgrade a lot of the septic systems. Right, and they won't have the funds mm -hmm. yes. available. So yes. um, what would it take then? You believe that there's not enough time to get it on the warrant? We're going through warrant review tonight. Um, because the language is going to be similar. I mean, the process, I don't want to push it off until oh, the uh, annual, if we could get it on the special, if it's just the request. Well, the, our financial we'll advisor the advised not to put it on this meeting. It's too soon. We've got to have that initial meeting with DEP first. To see if they'll approve it? Can we put if it we in go pending through. approval uh, from DEP? Can we talk to town council about it? You can put any. Uh, article on and just withdraw it or table it indefinitely at town meeting. But, uh, sorry, I guess maybe I don't understand the process. We need to meet with DEP. Board, Board of Health, Board of Health needs, needs to meet with yeah. DEP and start the process. Start the process before. And then they reach out to the Clean Water Trust to see if there's money available. Um, so is that something we, we can't put on there pending? Uh, approval through DEP and the process mm -hmm. so that we get the yeah. language on there so that it's set in stone. We don't have to wait another eight months prior to. We'll have to know the amount that you want by the night of town meeting, too. I, I think you certainly need another. 200? I don't think. Uh, I think we can do a sum of money uh, for at least the warrant. Well, sum of money, I mean. Usually we do a yeah, sum of money. Hundred, I, mean, yeah. I don't mind mentioning two hundred thousand. I mean, right. well, there's if not. If you rather have an amount, if you want to decide on the amount, yeah, and right. just make sure the language is consistent. What town council believes to right. be consistent with right. the fact that we want to do this. Right. We don't want to wait till the annual town meeting. Right. We know that there's a process that needs to happen with it, um, right. just like everything else, which is pending. You know, it doesn't happen if we don't get into the trust. Right, Mr. Chairman, can I ask Nate a question? Is that sure. water line? That process beginning at all in Clark Shores or not? It, yeah, it's a little unclear. Oh, there's okay. A, there's 130 properties on the seasonal water. Line. Okay. So, in the past month, the Board of Health has received um, four inquiries about the septic ones. Right. So that's what kind of brought this forward. And, and okay. to your point, that they are running forty to fifty thousand dollars a piece. Right. Now, right. So that's only water. four. With right. So you right. chew right. through those real fast. Okay. Well, well, I, I think to to they're all to, to Mitzi's point. Let's just get the language right with our attorney. And what dollar amount would you want? Ten million. <laughs> I, I think a couple hundred. I think a couple hundred thousand would be appropriate. Yeah. Well, it, it let's is ask a big the board bonding, So I yeah. mean. Let's ask the Board of Health what they yeah. think in terms of, of the number, because if they borrowed this years ago and they still have 89 grand left right. plus the grant, but right. you know maybe they're not doing too too many, but maybe there's a there's a problem on the horizon that we need to. Find. I think we've done 50, um, at least 50. Yep. And they've been you know as properties are sold, mm -hmm. um, they they are paid off. But um, right. I had yep. Lola actually go back and I think. The numbers went up into the 50s, so we've done a lot of them. Right. 
Okay. All right, so that sounds like a plan. We'll, we'll yep. approach it that way and, and with the goal of trying to get that on for, for the November uh, town meeting. Ten A. <laughs> Never had an A before. Yeah, we yeah. have. We have. <laughs> and then uh, what I was able to do, I was able to finalize some of the wording on the warrant on the draft. Okay. Okay. So, uh, agenda item. 10A is to review and vote on the special town meeting articles and vote to sign the special town meeting warrant for November 13, 2017. So we have a special town meeting that's coming up on November 13th at the high school. It's 7 p.m. and we're hoping for a quorum. So we have uh, we have these articles here to. take a look at which we've so what what changes are I wasn't sure if uh, town council and the town accountant as far as ratifying the fire unions contract and the laborers union would I do it in two separate uh, warrant articles and Greg Corbo combined them into article one and then if you read the, the last omnibus style pardon the omnibus budget uh, the and then of 2017? He refers to the um, amount um, in Article 2, which is the transfer from uh, the contractual obligations, the money we set aside at the annual town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the transfer will be shown on Article 2. Okay. And Article 2 is um, we have a couple of unpaid. Um, bills for the year. And the property and liability insurance I put on there for 4000 just in case the board does decide to go forward uh, with the hazardous uh, environmental insurance policy. Article 3 is um, Article 3 and 4 are two unissued uh, debt that's been on the books for a while. The f Article 3 was for um, the water storage tank, the 1.1 million. That was interest that was forgiven uh, through the loan and the loan has been paid off anyway. So that unissued debt stays on our statement of indebtedness with the DOR every year. So you have to vote to uh, rescind it. Article 5, um, back in 05, the Sluckman uh, had an article for $150,000. Uh, on we only used 146, so there's 4,000 in outstanding debt we never issued. This is four? Oh, now it's the new four, right? I see. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. Right. Article five um, was but, to. But the explanation of what the bonds are for is where? Um, you, you're giving them to us. Are it was on them, your in your agenda them, packet. Are we giving them to the. I can no. put it on the warrant oh, okay. uh, as an okay. explanation. No, I, I was just wondering the, yep. of the procedure. That's okay. Yeah, no, we can. I can no, add that, that wording. That, no, that's okay. Okay. Or well, the selectman who, when you read the motion, you can explain that this is debt that was never issued and we're never going to issue it. Yep. We're rescinding it. Right. Right. Okay. Article five was to reduce the uh, quorum. For our town meetings. That always gets people there, so. That's why it's on there. Yep. Yeah, from one hundred to twenty five. Okay. I forget what we had it on last time. Was this it ten? Um last time you put it, it on 50. Aaron. Fifty. Okay. Is but this is not specific to special or annual. It doesn't need to be, right? In it's any town meeting, okay, not so by law. Yeah, I, think I checked on that, yep. yes. Okay. 
I actually went back to our motion, our article when we had it on last time, and then I checked our bylaw, yep. and it refers to any town meeting. Okay. Article <coughs> six is the rezoning uh, of Staple Shore Road from business to residential. There's ten parcels. The planning board has their scheduled public hearing tomorrow night at the library. Article 7, I just got the wording today um, for Article 7 and 8, and this is to do with um, the accessory structures that ZBRAC has been working on, and the planning board is also holding their public hearing tomorrow night on that, that um, the accessory structures will be allowed by special permit. Yep. And then I highlighted um, on your new handout, and Nate, you might want to talk to this. Um, this uh, uh, Sylvester Zinkowitz on the planning board, at the planning board meeting, he had concerns about that wording, about um, the restrictions, and letting the ZBA put restrictions on it. Um, and Nate has talked to town council. Nate doesn't have a problem with it coming out, but yeah, and, and nor do I have a problem with it staying there, and neither does town council. The, the only reason that was highlighted is just to bring to the selectmen's attention that it's a it's something that's going to come up tomorrow night, and you know we'll we'll let the planning board and, and the zoning bylaw review committee kind of hash out whether or not it's going to stay. What was his concern? He figured it gave a, a large degree of deference to the ZBA which may not be properly afforded to them. I mean, I, I don't know as though his concerns were should be validated. It just gives the ZBA that ability to, to limit. But isn't that who you want? I mean, isn't that who normally uh, on a special permit would agree more. Yeah. put forward the restrictions that Dick Scott is talking about relative to older? Yeah. That's who should be doing it. Yeah. Really, I mean, that's that's precisely why you have a zoning board um, so okay no I appreciate the heads up so I didn't know <coughs> if um, you want to keep that in there in the Warren article or if the board wants to remove it so because well, we can talk about that post tomorrow night's meeting okay right? so what we would do uh, I know I had asked to sign the town meeting warrant tonight but we'll have to add on so you can vote to sign it after amended uh, as agreed to so we'll wait for the hearing and maybe you can hold a quick meeting next week because I think I have to have this ready for the 18th um, I have a CDC meeting that I need to have posted for the 18th from 530 to 630 so I'm here Mr. Chair, if I, may, uh, I would recommend voting on it as written and if it needs to be ratified after the tomorrow night's meeting then maybe you can do that at that point that's reasonable. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, it's not a big deal for us to Tomorrow throw a meeting night? together. Well, yeah, the selectmen, yeah. I need the selectmen to vote. No, if the, if oh. the selectmen vote, he wants now, us to vote oh. as tonight. Really, and if, we, if in fact, we oh. need to ratify that vote based on tomorrow night's meeting, then so be it. Right, if we need to change, we need to change the language, we can do it next week, basically. So, either way, I mean, we need yeah. to have a meeting. <laughs> No, next because if, no. if if there's after nothing that tomorrow changes and night it goes through, it's then determined we're that we okay. don't that the language is fine and everybody's okay with it. Right. Um, okay. The, that we've um, you know had a conversation relative to why or why it should not to change it. <coughs> Sorry, I can't even talk anymore. <coughs> um, then we won't have to meet because it will have been okay. voted on. We might be meeting with. Gene Fox on the 18th. That's we'll kind of funny that though later. that we would vote. Mm. I mean, they're having a hearing relative to all of this, and we're already voting that we're we don't really even care what the outcome of the hearing is. We've already approved the language. I mean, that's not why we're doing it. I do care about the outcome of the meeting, and I'm happy to change the language if that's where it goes. But it's just kind of uh, right. But we're, but we're not, happy if it goes not to linear. The, we're happy if it goes to the zoning board. Yeah, no, I, I'm because, okay with this yeah, personally. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Sorry. Rita, you. Um, and then the last three are uh, the road acceptances mm -hmm. for uh, Cedar Pond Preserve. 
see the Pond Drive, Koikashan Circle, and Ron Circle. And that all seems to be uh, pretty on target. I talked to Mike Renzi, one the resident that's leading the uh, everything being done, and they seem to be on target. So then there really is no way we can have the appropriation of the money for the Board of Health on this meeting. Well, I mean, it's a borrowing want, authorization. Okay. Okay. I, I probably would add it. Um, we usually do the money all together. So maybe after the rescinding, make it um, the article before the quorum. If, if you vote to add that Warren article, uh, I would say 200000 It is a, a uh, I mean, the borrowing that Clean Water Trust, just the right. loan alone, it takes one banker box of paperwork. It's a pretty big borrowing. The hoops you have to jump through. So. Well, we just had a conversation about the process we're going to follow relative to this. I, I don't really want to pick a number. Can we just put in a sum for now? Okay. Because I really want to get Actually, some information right. from the Board of Health and what their expectations are. Was that a motion or <coughs> did it say the motion or yes. to see if the t Yes, I can tell. Just discuss. No, uh, what I could do is just look at the... Language to see sure. if the sum okay, so it wasn't the motion and it was voted. So, uh, let me just go to that special town meeting and I can tell you what the warrant said. This is the motion which has the has to have the dollar amount. Okay, okay, I'll just take it. Yeah, we'll just want town council to verify the language. I'm gonna take two minutes to get some water. Does anybody need any water? Want to no. take a three minute break? Okay, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll take five. Like, like Kim, right. can we take five? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I answered my own. All right. Question. All right, late Cam, I guess we're, we're, all right, you're good. Thank you. All right, Rita, do you want to continue with? Oh, we're, oh, that oh, we're was, done That was it. it. Okay. So now uh, if we add on that other article. Yep. Friday night, I didn't know how many articles we would have until I heard back from town council. So it would be to put the following articles, 1 through 12, on the warrant. And you already, I just read them into the warrant. Yep. Okay. So that's the so motion. So that, that's the motion. Does somebody want to make that motion? Uh, so moved. I'll second that. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries at unanimous. And then your next meeting, you'll vote to sign it once it's finalized. Mm -hmm. Right. And then we'll have a warrant review with FinCom. With, with FinCom. <clears throat> Finance Committee approves, uh, recommends approval. That's not Mike yeah. anymore. <clears throat> Agenda item number 11, review and vote to sign the contract for event management for the Loon Pond Lodge. So we had met with Bill Fuller at our last meeting and gone through that entire contract. And I took notes and emailed them to everyone for review. These were forwarded along to the attorneys. Have they? Uh, they were waiting for um, Mitzi's revenue numbers. They're waiting so. on that just yeah. for me? Just for me. Can, can they wait till after the tax timeline? So again, we could um, put that on. It's really just opening up books and records. They should have standard language in a purchase and sale agreement about that, because that's all it really was. Well, I think, too, do you want me to say to break it down specifically, those four revenue items? Yeah, the, which it's just identifying the revenue items that are mm -hmm. in accordance with this agreement. And then the second piece is really just making sure that we have standard language, which you see with access to books and records in a PNS. I'll call Lee Smith tomorrow. Okay. And then uh, hopefully yeah, when you sign the town meeting warrant, I'll put this back on. You okay. Put it on for a reminder, sorry. As far as you know that all of this me. stuff was, was good? I mean, because some of this stuff was discretionary for the attorneys to work yeah. out. Did, you, did they do all of that? 
I uh, put them in touch with each other. Okay. And that, we, we emailed me today to see if I had gotten the, and I probably should have called you yeah, <laughs> yesterday. I, but, um, yeah, I mean, I can get that There's language. Some imaginary, I, I mean, uh, there's some tax deadline that only accountants know about. Yeah, 401k is busy. <laughs> <laughs> Mythical. No time. Tax deadline. People who didn't file on time. All right, number 12. <clears throat> Discuss and vote to submit a 40R application to the Department of Housing and Community Development. Okay, so on October 5th, the Board of Selectmen met with DHCD to have a conversation relative to expanding the existing 40R district. 40R district now is down by the commuter rail, um, and the idea is to expand it along that same piece of land into Riverside Drive. The end of Riverside Drive is currently undeveloped there is the potential to do a development, a residential development down there. Um, the developer is proposing a 40B. So the thought was, if we expand that into a 40R, he's going to be doing the development anyway. At least the town would get money for that. So in our meeting with DCHD, we learned that it's not quite that simple <laughs> and you guys can chime in if I screw this up because a, a lot of it um, was was um, the way that the, the information unfolded wasn't necessarily um, in a linear fashion so I don't r really recall or I shouldn't say I should say I don't know if I have all the details correct but there's a timing issue with the 40B application, meaning that if the applicant applies for 40B, friendly or otherwise, it's the granting of the permit that it's triggers. A letter of eligibility from his financing, uh, if it's yeah, mass housing. Yeah, it's okay. subsidizing. It's not the say. comprehensive permit from the ZBA, it's his letter of eligibility. Which happens after that. No, nope. first. Happens yes. first. first. Yep. No, no, isn't that what it was changed, changing to? Because the regs are changing? I, it's I all think getting I cloudy. Think <laughs> changing that you can't switch <laughs> Put four people a in project. Right, because they thought different. that was going to be out in, out in the future. They okay. weren't going to make it in yeah, right. well, this year at all. We don't, yes. we don't necessarily need to go. Oh, no, we don't you're necessarily close. even no, you're need close. to go down into no, this. Close. This um, yeah. these details. I think generally speaking, there's there's an opportunity to zone a portion or, or put an overlay district on a portion of land that is currently zoned commercial that has not been developed commercially since it was zoned that way for a number of different reasons and. A residential development is going there anyway, so the thought is there's an opportunity for the town to get some, some funds from it, state funds. I think that's kind of the general idea. Yeah. I mean, we, we had a good conversation there, just to recall the conversation, because a lot of, you know, the developer's already gone to the ZBA to present his first potential, uh, to present the idea of the 40B that would be going down there. So. As we looked at it, we wanted to make sure that if that was coming anyways, that, you know, as you mentioned, that we would be eligible, if possible, for incentive payments for density bonuses. Um, what we found out, too, which we don't have in the existing 40R district, is the ability to kind of um, allow for commercial and to change the zoning in that area specifically relative to commercial properties. Because I know that was an area that we talked about saying it hadn't been able to be commercially developed based upon the existing setbacks in that area. So allowing it to be a 40R district would allow us to put that in as an overlay too in that area um, with regard to some of those setbacks so that it could be available in the event that commercial development were to want to go in that area where we don't have that ability right now because it's limited by the existing zoning. Um, you know, that's what kind of why we had had that conversation with DHCD was to get a little bit more clarity on what our options are if someone's coming in with a 40B that we really don't have enough 
subsidized housing inventory to say no, um, but that the developer is willing to work with us to try to see if we can get a 40R in there so that we can get some incentive payments. Right. I, right. I think two, two things I get out of the meeting. One, to apply for a 40R that does not have to be a development presented to us mm -hmm. in front of us. So we can do an over, overlay district which does not do away with the current zoning so that whatever is permitted there today can continue to be done. The 40R just gives us the potential if they meet the uh, density bonuses uh, or density requirements, uh, then potentially a 40R can kick in and you get what we'll say $3,000 per unit additional money. So if they're going to do a B, and we submit it as an R prior to their approval process, letter of eligibility, uh, we might be first in line. So if they're going to build a B anyways by right, putting an R on it, the, the town would stand to get potential money. As I say, potential money. Right, uh, All, always subject to appropriation. Right, always subject to appropriation, and always subject to whether the builder met the density requirements, so on and so forth. And the other piece that we talked to them about, too, really related to the fact that we understand there's a plan out there potentially to close the Lakeville station or whatever the MBTA is going to be doing with regard to that. So putting an R district in there, it would be an R district because it qualifies for an R district regardless of whether or not the station in the future so, is not going to be so, operational at that point. So the R overlay would be for the undeveloped land owned by both Canpro and, and Jonathan White, as an example, the parking lot, the current MBTA parking lot, and the hospital site. So it would be all three lots, if I call them lots. And I think our our meeting tonight is to say should we go ahead and, uh, and apply for that right and there's a distinction yeah. though that needs to be made or not a distinction but a, f a footnote if you will to that conversation we did delineate two pr separate projects or warrants if you will so three right well I think that the third one is is the parking lot, correct? Right. So it's, it's yeah, the it could be, yeah. the parking yeah, lot. Yeah. The parking lot that may be abandoned by by um, Mass DOT, which could become a solar farm uh, without any, with complete unilateral action by the state, without any hearing or public process whatsoever. They can unilaterally, perhaps, put this stuff in. Um, when that parking lot is abandoned, <coughs> we would like it to be considered 40R for development purposes. We don't want to just have an abandoned parking lot. That's never a good neighbor. We want to have that be developed into something else. Um, so the idea was have that parking lot and the CanPro. I thought that was going to be one one uh, uh, article, yeah, if that you will. Be, yeah. And the hospital site which is also designated uh, 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 viable for 40R to be a separate article because that may be more uh, contentious than, than what is already um, property that's abutting an existing 40R and is already um, on that side of the road right where the existing train is. So the idea is that if we want to bring forward the idea of the hospital site being a 40R. It really should stand on its own um, because it is a distinct. It's it's a different. It's a different set of circumstances. The the argument for 40R on the hospital site would be that if a developer again, if a develop, developer is going to come in and do a 40B, at least the town would have some would get some uh, money out of it. Well, also we'd have, they'd 
have density requirements that they would. Well, yeah, I mean, all of that's an, an advantage to a certain degree too. But I mean, I think the real thing is is that it it's a potential way to, to increase revenue for the town. Right. But but I don't mind if it if it's we talked about this at that meeting a little bit. I don't mind if it's three different parcels. Right. So I, so so parcel. Yeah, and, and that you right, know. I mean, that one should, but but yeah, but the three parcels. The, if we talk about one being in the Camp Pro area, that's mm -hmm. really two different owners. Correct. So, but we can earmark the parcels, if you will, as an overlay. Mm -hmm. And then the MBTA a second, and the hospital a third. I would hope when we talk about contentious, <coughs> if a 40B is already allowed by right, a 40R doesn't complicate the matter much except give the town more money if in fact it's built properly. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't say a 40R has to go in there. A 40B can go in there, 40R can go in there, and right. single houses can go in there, businesses can go right. in there. But I think that the important thing to note is that that land is now zoned business right? business so and with the setbacks the existing setbacks nothing really would be viable to the go in, property. in the campro property yeah. right now because unless we change the majority of existing zoning uh, you would have 50 percent lot coverage you know it, it's just not well, it's well not right but, to a right. but if a business chooses to go the in there between now and when a developer buys it and starts its project the business is allowed anyways correct it's still a, right it's still business right. owned it's just right. an overlay district but it right. allows a little bit more flexibility yeah. with crafting but what this 40 r district would look like which includes mixed use including right. Right. business so right we're only doing it for a potential and it's only an overlay district anyways right so it, it to me it creates another possible revenue stream without harming the neighborhood if you will right and it allows you know town meeting to decide whether or not that's what they want to work with right right it's just an option mm -hmm. and yeah. it's an option that that could provide the town resources yeah. knowing um, that yeah, knowing right. that a development may be Imminent. put there right. under 40b so, which the town gets nothing right. so so our presentation <clears throat> the only one I'm a little bit perplexed on is do we do three different articles I I and, and not not combine the parking lot with with the camp roll thing because right now it's a parking lot and it would mm -hmm. be years before that could be turned over to us if ever turned over to us or ever built out yeah I mean I I would suggest three different but the, options and then okay. the the option then would be to merge those into the existing 40 R district in yeah. the event that they're approved yes because we yes. have one to amend but the existing I'll, I'll, I'll go along with that um, although I think they had said that the hospital site could be a separate 40R because it's not um, adjacent to well, the existing 40R, it wouldn't necessarily be an amendment of that 40R district. It could no, be. No, they said it could no, be an amendment. It, it doesn't right. have to be contigious. Okay. Right. So it does, could be as well. Does not with that have one. to be. Okay. But what, what I said, so could the only separate. suggested I'm saying is, is in case one part of it wants to pass, I don't want to nix right. the whole exactly. thing. Exactly. If I may, you can have the one warrant article with sub. Do all three. And yeah. on town meeting yeah. floor, you can eliminate. Yeah. We, okay. we want to make it as simple ESA. as possible, no, I think, for town meeting. Three yeah. articles. Two, that way three. everybody understands yeah. Yeah. if that's the case. Yeah. You um, want an override for a million, two million, or five million? Well, we'll pick the million. So, right. right. Right, give no, people an option. No, but that's, we that's not for this last town meeting. We town meeting. This is just absolutely black and white on everything. Yep. Yeah. You can't cloud stuff up. Um, okay. So, right, you know, this, this is, is just a correction. I'll talk about that. Overlay. After the I yeah. found one correction. And no, I just, I'll talk about that with you after the meeting. And this uh, is really just to have this discussion so that, what's our next step is, I'm already forgetting, we talked to, uh, it goes to the planning board for them to look at it, zoning board. Where, where do we go from here? Because we so have to have this conversation. I have a motion in front of me. I'm going to read it. You ready? I'm ready. This is the next step. I may not be ready, okay. but read the motion. I move to authorize town council and the town administrator to work on the 40R application for submission to the Department of Housing and Economic Development. That's my motion. 
Oh, that's what so. I just typed. I talked to Amy today. Okay. And the motion failed. <laughs> like, it didn't get a second. I, I'll second. No, I just. Do we do do Again. we want to say that it's three nope. different parcels or no? Nope, just, this this is, is fine. This okay, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes. Yeah, uh, you trying to put this on the town meeting on November 15th? Um, no. No. You're not. No. Okay. No. Uh, I got a couple <clears throat> of questions. In fact, I have a number of questions. Um, the first thing is having to do with the 40 yard district that's already there. Um, the town originally was supposed to get credited for 200 affordable units, and we're already getting credited for 100 affordable units. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened with that. Second of all, we never received all the funding for the 40-hour project that was supposed to be committed to the town. And the reason why is because the original trust fund for the 40-hour projects was $28 million, so the state doesn't have any money left at all. It's all subject to appropriation. Mm -hmm. And every year the town has been fighting to get that money appropriated. So once yep. again, we're committing to something that the chances of it getting funded in this bad economic times, nobody wants to talk about the state has got a huge deficit mm -hmm. right now. Those are the first things to go. The second question that I have has to do with the Campo property. Okay, now we're going to make a commercial property 70% residential. That's not what the town voted, town meeting voted for many years ago, was to set that corner up so it would be an economic development area. So now we're taking the balance of all of that land that Campo has, and it's not a case where it's not developer developed. It's a case where Campo hasn't done a good job in selling the property because there's a lot of businesses that are looking for property to develop commercially in town. The next question I have Did about the... I'm never going to remember this. Can I? Can we do the, the first ones? Sure. Okay, so... Um, if I could, could Aaron, so we did receive <laughs> all 912000 for the 40R. We are but it's the 40S money that right. we own. But so we did get all of that. Relative to the, to the, the count, too, because you talked about the housing count, so that's the first piece. We just got a, another letter from the, the um, uh, monitoring agency saying that we do not qualify because of the way that that development was built. Well, originally it was all condos. Right. Okay? And only 10% of those units were supposed to be affordable units. 25. Yes. Sorry, 10% of them originally, Rita. Um, and then the developer said, oh, I can't build this. I can't make any money on this project. So they came back to the town and went to the Board of Appeals and said, we're going to change them all to apartments. And they did. Mm -hmm. But nobody checked to find out whether all the units were affordable or not are going to count towards our affordability. And the state did tell us they were going to count the 200 units against our affordable, you know, quota that's required. And that's a significant amount of, an amount of units in the town. That right. we should have gotten credit for, which we didn't. I know. Can, I agree. Can I address well, that? I'm just, I'm just saying. So here we are. We're going to do another 40-hour project that's going to say, I don't know, 50% affordable? Well, no, but no, there's two, there are two different mechanisms here. So there's the plant, the zoning board goes through and, and works with the developer to, to do the, the permitting. Right. Then they amended the permitting to a point where the monitoring agency, after it was completed, who is, is a different agency from the one that said you can go ahead and do this, right? So you have Mass Housing and DCHD, or whatever it is, they're not they're not on the same page. And even within those those agencies, they're not the same people making this. There's different departments. So, the town council should have caught that. They should have known that. Not that's what you got to get paid for. They have a special. I totally agree. You know, so I totally agree. Are, so but have, but we this happened 15 years ago. I mean, I don't. Oh, it didn't happen. Or 10 years ago, years ago, or whenever it happened. But rich. Well, can I interrupt? I don't, I don't want to go there anymore and discuss this, but I'm just telling you that we've already had a 40-hour project so, that didn't go the way we said it was going to go. So, okay. Yeah, but, but okay. wait a second. That's, that's, that's true, but that's not... Um, 
that has nothing to do with that has everything to do with with what you're saying town council and the zoning board and then the state monitoring agencies mm -hmm. so you have a disconnect with all that stuff so i agree that it's that there's a there's a um a flaw in how the state permits this stuff approves this stuff and then another agency oversees it and has a different standard by which they're going to recognize units yeah but how how are we supposed to combat that well, so i think though one thing to no, 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 also no. I, I want an answer i mean supposed to combat? how do you combat when you well, have two state all, agencies you, that are just functional get something approved by the state you make them accountable to to make sure that you get it it's you, you you're trying to get funding here how do you do it though you're trying to get funding here and the chances of you getting funding going forward so i'm talking next, about counting units so count, we're, we're not even on the funding units. yet the application that you're going to fill out that you have to fill out right just be sent to the state ask you what the number of the units are it's oh, not it's it? not specific no. to a project no so this I, does I, no i i, I, I think the application not, today. Specific. So what i want to address too is another aspect that we didn't talk about with our meeting with dhcd because what we had said by looking at it and looking at the subsidized inventory and saying look we just got our denial letter on these hundred units and we talked about what happens with m projects that where the comprehensive permit is issued and then it gets amended and then it gets amended and it gets amended and before you know it it actually does not fit the qualifications for a 40b project and i'm talking 40b just to let's talk 40b first so you can end up with a project that starts out one way and if it goes through amendments which get passed through zoning it's then declared through local control that that's okay to do but in the end, the project that was supposed to be a 40B is not qualified as a 40B, and you don't get qual you don't get like to Baron, count like it, that case. that you, know, you change the Baron from you know yes yes to an example units, exactly to residential and, and lifted so, restricted absolutely you just lifted yep. that okay right. why didn't we do that right. no, no exactly you know, I agree so it's you totally have a conversation ridiculous. with the board of appeals and town council right so it should not have so happened this is the conversation that we have with DHCD because right. looking at it and saying look we want to know that when we have a 40 well, project you. coming through the other thing too is you can't have one project that's mixed both rental and it happens to be for sale unless they both qualify pretty much independently with the 25% affordability characteristic that has to be laced throughout the project. Now, that is an issue and what happened with um, Kensington and Sterling is that one building was 100% affordable and the other one was not. So therefore, it's not one project, it was done in phases. And therefore, if the 25%, which needed to be affordable, was dispersed between the two buildings in 50 and 50, we would have been fine. Um, you know, the problem was that, or 50 in total, that didn't happen. So we were addressing a lot of these issues that we've seen as we look at these 40B applications. Now, or as we, the projects are presented. You can't have a for sale over here and a rental over here and say, well, the rental's gonna be affordable. I'm selling all these units at market rate. That's not one project that counts. And if that gets approved, that's a huge problem because that means, guess what? The only thing that you're gonna be able to count is the rental because that's gonna be part of what actually qualifies for the interspersed low income. Um, so we were addressing a lot of those concerns because I, I, I know we had town council there because we want to know as as we have a 40b this is really our first 40b that's not a three building rental that's come in front of us that we're aware of to make sure that we're not falling into these traps of things that already have happened or will happen such that your subsidized inventory is not included and in fact your housing stock is included so your your percentage is diluted so i just want to address that that we are aware of this and we're trying to tell the board of appeals that town council. we just met with them last week you know, on thursday and today's to you not to the board we, of appeals. Town, town council was with us so you know, and it's and i think it's a disgrace it's a disgrace and it's an embarrassment so we're doing we're, what we your, can do your, your personal opinion is not relevant okay? it is it is relevant it because it affects the town we get it that. affects the town so, it affects but, the project it you affects can, the, you can affects the us, taxpayers you it does and, and we're aware of it, and we're trying to work on, on a solution for it, but right. just the ad hominem stuff is just, so, just leave it okay, alone, just, we don't need it. So just, so, well, okay, let me, let's, let's me go back to the, the R project, too, because I want to just, project? I want to continue as to address the question that you had at first, really, which relates to the fact that 
We had that conversation. We realized that 40B can come in. It can look like a 40B. It can smell like a 40B. And the next thing mm -hmm. you know, the permit gets amended a bunch, a bunch of times or it gets approved through zoning. And now you don't have a 40B in the end. So we were addressing that when we talked to DHCD. The other piece, too, really relates to the fact that we know there's a 40B that's been presented to the zoning board. So when we looked at it to say, can we get a potential for a density payment if it en ends up being working with the developer because he's going to do a 40B regardless. So if you can zone this area such that there's a possibility that you'll get a payment because he can come in anyways, I would think that we would be doing a disservice to the town to not take advantage of working with the developer on this project that he's looking to do to see if, yes, subject to appropriation, but he can do it anyways. That's what the point of this meeting really was to do, is to say, we want this person wants to work with us. We're happy to work with them. If we can get the zoning changed such that if there is funding available for density bonus payments, that we can be the recipient of it because he's going to come in and do it anyways. Okay. That's what the conversation is. Another question. Do you have a copy of the purchase and sale agreement for the Campo property? I don't. How come? It's not. It's you gave them water. You should have asked for a copy of the purchase and sale agreement of who owns it. Do they own the property now? I can't give you an answer on that. Well, don't you think we should find out before we submit Rita an application probably to the knows. state? It, it's under purchase and sale. No, because it's, oh, no. see, our, it's our thinking on this is that we're relative we're not we're not tying this to a specific development the, the thought is let the people of Lakeville decide whether they want to put a 40 R overlay on that parcel or those parcels of land but you have to submit an application that provides the information about the development you don't it's a you zone don't, don't. it's a zone that's why we overlay. that's why we can do it on the hospital site because well, if you, we don't have a project want, that's been if you put in front of us. You've got to provide that to the state. It's when it's if the zone is set that way. What they explained to us was, as if the development on that property then meets the 40 R requirements for density, that it, it, if it increases the housing stock, that's when you're eligible for the bonus payments. If in accordance with the, the district. R, the 40 R is supposed to be a mixed development that includes commercial and residential. Right. So the area that's being changed is not a combination of residential and commercial. Correct. Correct? It's a business zone right now. Right, but it's not, it's all going to be residential. You take it, all of the lots. It can be mixed use. Well, the proposed well, I mean, development. What does the, the purchase and sale agreement say? The proposed development is for is residential. a residential 40B. A residential 40B, right? Right. Okay. Has anybody done an analysis, a financial analysis, of the pros and cons of a 40B and what it's going to cost the town or a 40R? We don't have a choice with the 40B. We, you do have a choice. There's choices if you want to pursue the choices. What are the choices? Don't say it's by right because it's not by right. Well, what are the choices? The choices are a lot of things that need to be addressed. One of the questions that I would have for you, do we have a, a development agreement with the developer? For, no. Why what, not? For what? What's what? it? For what? I mean, What's in it for the town? When we did LeBaron, we had a development agreement with LeBaron. They provided a million dollars in water line. They provided two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the for the senior center and other things that they did for the town. Why don't we have a development agreement for this developer? What are they doing? They're going to. From my understanding, even, through the great He hasn't even gone through the process. Well, of you, you, but you gave him water right up front. Why did you give him water without understanding what the project's going to be? Why? I, I didn't give him water, but you I, did. You I, voted to give him water. I didn't. I rescinded. I, I, okay, uh, accused Vincent, myself, you voted to give him water. Why? Because we had an application they, in front they, of us. You never saw water. the purchase sale. You don't even own the property. As far as I know, he doesn't own the property yet. But what can you do specifically, though? What? I mean, so a, a developer agreement is one thing. Is is there other stuff that that we should be thinking about? And that's only There's a lot of things that you can do. Well, specifically. Specifically. Things for community development, things to, for uh, infrastructure. So you know, as, an, all as an example, we're going to talk about the Lakeville Hospital. You know, traffic lights at Bridge Street, traffic lights at, at Vaughn Street. I mean, those things were agreed to that was previously. Done, wasn't that done through zoning? No. no. That was done through the selectmen, yeah. too? So, I mean, the, the question is, 
you know, we haven't seen anything specific on it, and we're we're kind of waiting at this point to see where it's going. I mean, we we know that he can come in and and do a 40B, which, from what I understand, anything that you develop with a community agreement is not required. I mean, yes, it would be nice to have those conversations. Well, as a taxpayer, you should have those conversations because these particular projects are going to have a serious impact on the town's services, including the schools, if what's being proposed is correct. Don't you agree? I can't give you an answer on that. We have some potential right now where whatever the proposed development is, I have no idea if it's going in that direction where it's going to be one bedroom apartments which are going to be age restricted. We had some, you know, that was what was presented also to the zoning board. So the information is not set in stone yet. We're working to try to gather that information so that we can make some decisions. Okay. Let's go on to the Lakeville Hospital. You said you're going to change it to 40R. No, that no. would be town meeting who would We're do it. We're just proposing all of this well, stuff. Well, I mean, yep, it's coming from the, from the Board of Selectmen. As an option for sure. town meeting to talk right. about. Right. So it's, it's, you're putting it forward, right? Do you support that? I, I support the idea of town meeting deciding that. Oh, you don't support the 40 r project then? I support, I do support the 40 r project with the idea that it gives flexibility for zoning. Okay. Uh, what's going on with the Lakeville Hospital? Meaning what? What's the status of the Lakeville Hospital? I heard it's been sold. And private sale. I don't know much more beyond that. You know they're doing work down there, right? They're cutting trees down and stuff? I haven't been by there. I've been working. So why would you submit a 40 hour project to town meeting without understanding what the developer's going to do? Because if, if you take a site, you stand to get $3,000 per unit uh, as a 40R. With, without that, you perhaps won't get that. But how do you know it's residential? But it doesn't make any difference. It's well, an it overlay make, district. You, you can still do difference. commercial. No, it, it's without a project. It's without a project. It gives you the potential to get reimbursed if a builder chooses to build it as a 40R. We're not changing it from business. It's an overlay. It's an overlay district. It's not being changed and you have to build a 40R. It's only if you build the 40R and we have that application in, we can get a potential hundreds of thousands of dollars of reimbursement. And so <laughs> so, agreement, so we, no, we, we got that. If you, if you take that for Sterling and Kensington Court, what didn't happen was that it didn't count in your housing inventory. You still got, what, $900,000? $900, $900, $912,000. 912. 912. So if you don't do the overlay district, you have no potential to get that money. I mean, you can make the assumption that, that, that it won't get funded or won't get funded completely by the state. I mean, that's, that's a fair assumption based on, on the market, or I should say of the, the budget issues they're having but that's not necessarily something that'll happen every year I mean I guess the thought was if you have an opportunity to get money for development that's going to happen why wouldn't right. you change it really so that, that that's it, where I come from is if so the development the is, go, is going to happen you're going to get money if it's a 40R designation we're not saying it has to be a 40R it's only if it is built to 40R specs that you get reimbursed it's, it has a tremendous upside money to it. And That's all. I think it's important to note that none of us are necessarily going out there and saying that we believe that this is what's best for the town. We're going out there and saying we want the town to decide. We have a well, corridor study that was done. Right. Of this town. Yeah. You're making a, you're putting this you're putting this article on town meeting, and you're you're going to say, hey, you guys. Decide what you want to do, and they know no. nothing about no, it. No, and we have no. So you have a, no. I, I'll sup I support it because you have the potential to get three thousand dollars per apartment. One of the biggest That's problems what you get. the town has is commercial development. We don't have it. You can still do commercial there because it's forty R doesn't do away with the commercial. It doesn't do away with commercial. I don't know. I mean, I know who. 40, bought, I know who bought the Lakeville Hospital. Forty Forty R does not take the place of commercial. It can be it's done, 
has an overlay. It yeah, doesn't they, doesn't do away with the commercial. It doesn't do away with the commercial. No. So well, you yeah. know what he bought it for. So I, I read the but, deed the other day. But okay, what? why did you tell me it's not finished? What isn't finished? You just said the sale hasn't been finished. You don't know. I didn't say that. Well, somebody just said it. Mitzi just said it. On what? Well, but you didn't know that Mitzi's the, the, not I, me. I, I you said asked I, about cutting I said trees. You asked about cutting trees. Cutting I trees. said I haven't oh, driven I by there. You know about, I asked what you knew about the Lakeville Hospital sale. Oh, you said what, nothing. What's there to know? I mean, somebody bought it. That's the rumor I heard. I, we, haven't, we don't know what he's doing with it. Well, what, what is the disadvantage as an overlay district? You're giving up the potential of $3,000 per unit by not doing it. That's all. It okay. doesn't do away with commercial. Let, let's put that aside for a second, okay? I want to know, as a taxpayer, and I'm sure these neighbors would like to know, because if the Lakeville Hospital was going to be discussed as a 40-hour, it should have been on the agenda, and it wasn't on the agenda. All you'd said no, was... I'm, no, I'm... To all you said was... 40-hour. All you said was, let's discuss... 40-hour application to the Department of Housing and but, Community. But you didn't say Lakeville Hospital. You didn't say Campo. You didn't say the T-Station. You didn't say anything. We had a selectman's meeting and talked about all those. You, you could have been the there. Lakeville Hospital? Absolutely. You could have we been there. Maps. It was a posted meeting. I, I well, didn't see that. Well, then you didn't read the posting. But anyways. No, the, not the, anyways. The, the, it was a posted meeting, Rich. You could have right. gone. The concern is, and I have a major concern with the Lakeville Hospital property, is if he bought it for a buck, then he has the money to tear down those buildings. And the town ought to make sure that before they do anything, they have a development agreement with them, before they approve water, they <coughs> understand what the plan is and what they're going to do with that facility. And it should not be done in piecemeal. You shouldn't say, well, I'm going to develop the property in front and I'm going to leave those buildings up. The first priority, because one of the reasons was that people didn't want to buy the building was because they were asking five, six million dollars for the property and it was going to cost two or three million dollars to tear it down. Well, now tear it down and that ought to be the goal of the town <coughs> is to get those buildings down and once you get those buildings down then you can and the cleanup that needs to be done because there is cleanup that needs to be done on, on that property then they can come in with a plan the hospital site discussion of what a builder or buyer is going to do with it is not on the agenda the 40r is i understand but you brought it you brought you're bringing up a zoning, i didn't bring you're bringing up a zoning change and it's a zoning change yes, having as, to do with that property. Yes. I have every right to talk about the Lake yes. Hospital property. Yes, but you I, said it wasn't on the agenda. I'm telling you, you missed the meeting. You missed the I meeting, Rich. The agenda, the, tonight's agenda, it wasn't on the agenda. It was not mentioned because on the agenda about the Lake Hospital. Because it says the 40-hour application is a carryover from last week's meeting that you didn't go to. Well, we All talked right, about guys, guys listen so, I, I appreciate your you know, insight on that because what you're saying is it is that if we're considering a zoning change we should know more about what's going to happen w within the whole build out or, or plan for the property i would say so no and i think that's a, a fair I, observation i don't, I don't to, think so to john's point you don't need the point we're just contemplating an overlay that can be used for various different types of development that wouldn't that doesn't necessarily have to include a definitive plan before you uh, uh, um, put forward it, the overlay that's that's really the distinction what we found is you do not need a plan and the advantage is you have a potential upscale revenue without that 40 hour overlay you miss the boat Nelson did you uh, what, what are the numbers how short are we from the 10% goal of We're like 7.6% right now. Um, what was it? You've got that number I, somewhere. I did, and it was on. It's on your desk, I thought. It's at least a couple hundred. A couple hundred? Mm hmm Now, if the Campo property were to go forward as proposed, I guess, how many units would that give us? We, that, that property, that's one of the issues that we had was as it was presented, um, it wouldn't meet the requirements of 40B in that regard. It would for the rental component, but it wouldn't for the for sale. And the rental, I think, was going to be 100 what, what, units, was potent, it? Potentially 80 or 88 as a 
as an age restricted, With if an you age will. Restriction. So in round numbers, we're a couple hundred short. That would give us 80 or so. So we'd yeah. still be more we'd than still 100 be, yeah. short. Yeah, yeah. you'll be short. Yeah. Because it keeps being a moving target as, yeah, you, as you do 30 yeah. houses a year. Yeah. And I mean, for the past three years, pretty much, or four years, really, I mean, you've gone up to the state house at least once or twice. We've been trying to see if there was any way we could get the other 100 units counted at um, Kensington Court right. because we were trying to say it was a phased project. We were trying to right. find some way to get right. it done. Right. We, it's again, got right. denied. It's, ma it's marketed to the rate of, it's all so, so a market rate at full retail. So just sort of educate me for a second. If if those were the numbers, mm -hmm. 200 short today, it's that would give us... 750 and we need 1,000. Okay. Say, so that would give us 80. So we're still like 120 short. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say the property at the hospital, the hospital property, there was a development plan for that, for residential. Mm -hmm. Is that, because we're 120th, let's say all things stay stagnant up until that point, short. Could, could there be a project there that would gain us 200 units or can we set the limit at 120, therefore setting the limit at the entire size of the project? Well, I think the the problem with 40B and what counts for subsidized inventory is if it's for sale, then it's only the for sale units that are counted. If it's rental, then as long as 25% of the entirety of the rental project is affordable, all of those units, units count. So if someone wanted to put a 200 unit apartment building there and they needed to put 50 of them needed to be affordable, we would count 200, we'd be over our limit if those numbers, you know, hold correct and we can deny any future 40 B's that come through so, so could you not could you deny a project less than the 200 to give us just the 10 percent that we need and say this is as big as that project can be or could the project be much bigger therefore netting us more than the 10 percent that we need yeah. Which we're not necessarily probably interested in. I, I, I don't know. But right. We you know probably what I'm just want to double check with town council on that too. Is to if it's one project, I don't know that we can. Uh, we might be able. So the thing too, as long as we've got the housing production plan in place, which is going to be redone, um, I think this year, that that gives you a little bit more leverage if you already have a 40B project in the works. So in the event that we have a project that qualifies for affordable housing that's going on and it fits within the housing production plan, there's more ability for us to say no. It's not concrete, but we can address those concerns with town council, I think, just to get a little bit more information on those things. I don't know if we can deny a project per se that would kick us over the 10% to limit it just to the 10% because, because yeah, because it, al it also, you know, we add 200 units, well now you still need another you know, 20 of those need to be affordable. So it's, right. you know, that circular reference that but we've if, stuck But in. if you look at what what is being presented, possibly of 80-plus senior rental units that would qualify as a 40B, if you made that a 40R, you would get an additional yeah. $240,000 for something that could already be going there anyways. Yep. And if it qualified for 40B, I wouldn't deny it. I mean, the seniors are looking for affordable apartments. Whether it's affordable, you know, whether one says 1300 or 1500 or 1900 is affordable, I mean, I, I'm not too sure what is affordable, but if it qualifies, just because it's 40B, I don't know we should say, oh, no, we don't want that. Uh, so I don't think 40B is what I, what I say, uh, what a 40B might be in, in Brockton, what element it brings in. If if you take a, some 40Bs in town have, have rentals that are eighteen nineteen hundred dollars $1,900. I don't know, you know, I don't consider that affordable, if you will, but it meets the, the state criteria because you've interspersed that 20 to 25% affordability within a unit, you know, within, within the building. So I don't know that 40B should or shouldn't be denied by a town just because you're at a at a 10 percent cap i mean you can say no but i don't know that we would uh want to exclude it you want to hear about what the project might be i just think from a psychological mental from my perspective okay when we start talking about the hospital property 40r means residential right i immediately think of 
mass residential property here. And the root of my question was, can we limit that even though we're short on the 10%? Right. Well, what did you say the number was? We're officially with the Water Street Crossing at 7.01%, so we're 126 units short. Oh, that's that, it. Right, right so now. That, yeah. So yeah. It's less we're going to get 80 at Canberra. And it grows that, that, that need to, yeah. to I, grow. I see the plan, but. So, so that, that's even more my point. Right. If we're okay. only 40 units short of that 10% mm -hmm. threshold, and the hospital hasn't been developed, mm -hmm. and someone were to come along with a massive residential 40B for the hospital, could we deny that? Because we only need 40 more units to meet our 10% threshold. We can find that question out for you. Because that's critical. Yeah, we'll talk Because I think psychologically, a lot of folks think of that as being a huge problem with schools, traffic, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Well, and I think that it's important to note that when we started and we decided we wanted to get a meeting with DHCD, we knew because we had this 40B project that was coming to us that had been presented to the zoning board. And that was the point where we said, well, look, you know, why don't we look at this one area and look at amending the 40B and that's why, or the 40R district. And that's why we wanted to, after we had this meeting, was to authorize the, the application to include that. And then we talked about the other two potential parcels. And that's why we talked about it in different yeah. phases. And that's why they should be three separate articles because the, we know what the potential plan is for this one, but the 40R district may look different if you were applying it to different parcels anyways. So that's that's where this all came from. We weren't trying to go out there and throw an overlay over the 40, you know, over the hospital project or the hospital site because of it. It was, since we're in this already, let's get this one and then we can see what's, what's happening with it, really. Just, just one more point, then I'll stop. For years, you know, the threat theoretic development threat of the hospital has always been, well, if you don't approve Cisco, let's say, you get 40B. And I think psychologically, over a long period of time, a lot of people think if it's not commercial, if it turns into residential, it's going to be a massive housing development. Mm -hmm. And what, what we're talking about now is maybe that's not the case at all, ever, if we're at the 10% or very close to the 10% before anything were, were to be approved there. So the 40R overlay is sort of a scary thought, I think, for some folks. But if it doesn't have that unlimited potential, right. then it's not scary anymore. Right. You know I what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's, that's the consideration as we move forward on it is because we knew that we wanted to talk to town council about what are the commercial aspects of 40R um, and make sure that, because that doesn't exist in our current 40R zoning. It does. It does, but it's limited, right? Yeah, a, a neighborhood um, business with a Yeah, special so it's very permit. limited. So we asked them specifically about what could we do to maybe allow for this 40R zone where we have this projected 40B project coming in because nobody's bought it for years and years, you know, citing essentially or, you know, from anecdotal information about the fact that it would cost too much money to take these commercial lots based upon the existing setbacks. So what could we do in that area to ensure that if we're going to try to get commercial development there since nothing's happened for years, that this 40R district would address that in this particular section where that would be part of the overlay. And if not, then at least the residential that would be going in there anyways would potentially allow us to get some additional funding. So that was the thought process. Again, you know, I, I understand and I appreciate your insight with regard to the fear that's out there for the hospital project or the hospital site. So I want to make sure that it's clear that that wasn't the original intention of how this even came to our attention wasn't for that. Well, and then you, in the interim, it got sold. You raise a great question relative to 40R. If you meet your 40, if you meet your housing number under 40R and 40B, that then prevents a developer from using 40B. Does it prevent a developer from using 40R to make more dense housing? I, I would say no, but it, it, it might be right. More loose, so yeah. right. that's that's right. If we hit 40B, so then somebody then could come in potentially under a, a 40R zone over the hospital piece and make more dense residential development beyond that 10 percent because they're on 40R and not 40B. Right. So that's right. another right. thing to think about. The, the, for, the 40B connotation of we're going to overtax the schools, if you, you can use that for certain developments, but if, if you took LeBaron as an example to what has been built to date is age-restricted. 
and and so from a school point of view you don't have any additional services you certainly might have uh, more ambulance runs and things like that but it's age restricted so so let's say that that is a 40b qualified as a 40b i'm not saying it is or isn't but we get credit for 97 units today and that's hasn't added droves of kids hasn't added any to date what it does moving forward remains to be seen but but 40b doesn't mean filling up the schools did you do the adjustment in, in all the cases particularly if it's age restricted if they street, build yes. 80 age oh, no, restricted no. apartments i mean at the train station how many that's a great new housing that's a great project for the seniors if it's years. affordable dick did you have a, a question or comment this number is going to be bigger are you going to let well, me that's talk, a 20, or are you going to cut uh, me off? 10 census, yeah. Right. Well, if that's all you have to say, I guess I'll... I'm no, the reason I'm, I'm asking is because I've listened to this, and when the developer came to, who purchased or was selling the property, I advocated for that at town meeting where they were talking about mixed use, okay? And basically, the developer said, I'm going this route and I'm promising you that I'm not going to go 40B, okay? Now up until now, that national or nationals holding company is who we were dealing with and we did have an agreement, a development agreement with the town to get that zoning that was originally done, okay? I'm very concerned that if we change the zoning without some vision and one of the visions I saw was the 40R that Serpent presented at, at, at the library, okay? What, an important component of that was a commercial business part, not just residential. And I think we have to be very, very careful as we change zoning on that hospital, okay? That we have some kind, you know, it's, we had a project. That, that evolved and we changed the zoning and then the project kept changing. It changed residential here, business there, office space there, retail here. And I'm very concerned that, that there has to be some way of maintaining the zoning integrity to meet the town's objectives, not just the owners. Because I don't want to change the zoning okay until we have some vision of what that's going to be case in point the developer talked about a senior component a senior housing component of that original development okay and we were all in favor of it okay? that's part of the existing overlay now and i guess what i'm saying is even with the agreement holding their heat to the fire the only thing you have is the zoning and i'm very i'm I'm just very concerned um, if you look at if it was purchased for a dollar, okay, the original estimates for development of that property were so much for the land, so much for the demolition. Well, if you got it for a dollar, that component goes away. And to really develop that as the town and the developer envision has to talk about what is the demolition. Are you going to demolish the buildings? Are you going to refurbish the buildings? Because that's the way you know what's, de quote, developable, either as houses, as office space, and or commercial retail. So I, I guess I, my, my concern is that it's more than just changing the overlay zoning to the R. The right. Lake Bill, the well, hospital. It, all, all it would do is add another overlay. So it wouldn't change any of the existing zoning or the existing overlay. It just would put another layer on top of it. With the idea that, like John said, if somebody were to do certain types of development, we could potentially get credit for it if the state were to uh, fund that line item in their budget. In the original zoning, there were certain numbers of acres that were going to either be residential or business. That was the subdivision of that property, okay? And I think that division of residential, office space, 
retail. I think that's important because it puts a, a, a top on the number of housing units or the number of acres that's available. Going back to what you said about the setbacks mm -hmm. on the other side, okay? Anyway, I'll be quiet now. No, it's a good point. I think that I think what I'm hearing from everybody, and in, in, in certainly was Rich's point that I think um, was a good a good takeaway from this, is that there's there's a huge opportunity here from the town's perspective, and we need to find out what's going on and and demand a, a comprehensive plan for the sake of having that development done right. Um, I also think what I, you know, what I want to know from town council is, um, is, is your question. Um, if you get to the 10 percent, can you can you prevent it from going further? But then the other um, question is, if you get to your 10 percent, can you develop under 40R with expanded density? Right. Right. Well, I, Not a 40B, but a 40R. Right, because you set your density in your 40R. You set what the density can be. So you can still right. do the, the density. The question is really, right. if you yeah. come through with a, a 40, if you're I, full, I think you're under 40B, un if you meet it under 40B, right. can you nix 40R yeah, future Yeah, can you say, no, we don't want That's it. That's really right. the question. No, see, the question is, 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 well, what I'm trying to avoid is an unintended right. consequence. If, right. we, if right. we propose to zone the hospital site 40R, and we hit our 40B mark with 40Bs that aren't in the hospital site, then no one can come in and do a 40B on the hospital site, but maybe they could come in and do a 40R on the hospital site and have bigger or, or larger density, and housing density. I think that's, that's what I want to know, whether that can happen, because that's right. an unintended right. consequence right. of, right. of and you do a 40R and you can continue with a 40R. Right. You well, could stop a 40 right. B. And I think right. that, Nelson, just to kind of clarify a point, too, that um, the numbers that Rita was looking at, too, um, that the total housing inventory, that's from 2010. So yeah. that's not the right number. 2010? Yeah, exactly. So when I just looked at that, it's like 3,600 so, housing units. So we've built, you know, who knows how many more since 2010. Couple I know you usually say it's 26 right, a year. Right, we had some more in there. So. It's, right. It's 30 houses that number will change till 2020. Whatever. But some of those right. have been built under so. 40B. So, we'll so current. But you already have credit yeah, for so I guess. Uh, so, so just because you built more in LeBaron, you're already getting credit for 97 anyways. So, so how do you get a current number? So is it always going to be off the last census? The, every 10 years. Yeah. So it's off so. the last census for every 10 years. So when we hit 2020 and all of a sudden your total housing stock is you know, 4,500, now you're at a different... I, I don't want to give you that sense of oh, optimism that you're getting to 40B. I don't know that you're ever going to get there. I don't years, think you're ever going to get there. Once we look at the new housing yeah. stock. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know why, imprecise. I guess. Yeah. 10-year cycle? Yeah. Yeah. You're probably not ever going to get there. And, and that's what happened to a lot of communities. Thing, any for sale units that get signed is no longer restriction as far as age restriction and so forth, so you know. Right, you can't uh, in a forty R you cannot demand to be age restricted. A builder, a builder can suggest to be age restricted, but they can't the one demand. Down, uh, on Main Street there, Woods Edge, I think yeah. it's called. Yeah, Whatever. couldn't sell for those were always fifty five and older. Once a unit gets sold, the restriction is limit is, is lifted. So there's uh, no restriction. Well, on no. <laughs> also, it, if they can't sell it at the affordable rate. And also note that rental units are not in perpetuity with a 40B for an affordable counting for your subsidized housing inventory. I don't know if it's 40 years, roughly, um, which is a long time, but it's something to think of for the future planning of the town, too, that if we met our threshold, well, you know, in 40 years, you're going to need to be... They come off the rolls. They come off the rolls for rentals. Yeah. There's also other triggering events that can kick a... a, a for example, a, a take remove a house out of a 40B count um, in certain circumstances depending on the language in the the agreement if a house is foreclosed on and it's done with notice to the to the lender um, it can be sold at market rate post foreclosure so there this is a there's a whole lot of things that that change the number um, of the stock it's not set in stone once you have it it's it's a guaranteed 
affordable unit. It's a 10 year accounting for that. Every 10 years, if you had a major 40B project come in here last year, let's say, you could have another one with, before 2020 and you have no control over that because well, so you need it in 2010. The affordable units keep adding. Yeah, so the subsidized housing inventory account keeps going up every single year. If you build more, you get credit for it. It's the denominator. It's the total, you know, that we're dividing oh, okay, over that doesn't okay. get adjusted for the total housing units within uh, um, until the next census. So that's the point where. Right, so, so the, it's so kind the of a 30 weird, houses a year we build is not being. It won't be added, counted until 2020. Yeah. Hmm. So, but I think that there's a lot of information that we can gather because I think we understand some of the concerns regarding. You know, just getting a little bit more information for everybody of what it means with affordable housing um, within the town and what we do with 40B. So we can work with town council to kind right. of did, get some information. Yeah. I, I think the real, real point that we tried to make, make on, or at least I do, is that it doesn't make you put a 40R in there. It just says if one is there. I'd much rather see business go in there in a heartbeat, that kind of thing. But if it does go in there, it you you'll get cr financial credit for it. whether they'll meet the density bonuses the builders are having a hard time doing that anyways they'd rather make money at market rate so whether even someone saying they're going to do a 40 b whether it meets that requirement i think the housing the state housing authorities are looking at that more they're making sure that the affordability is interspersed and things like that they, i think they were somewhat lax in the past about that so uh, they won't be in the future. But, but you're not near that 10% that mark, and it's really a moving target. All right. Uh, Does anybody else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody, for coming in and uh, participating. Uh, agenda item number 13 is the annual review for the town administrator. So we've been given a form that we've used in the past to do our review. Did anyone expect to have that done for tonight? I don't have, I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm I, counting I, on Mitzi I because I, as I say I agree with Mitzi honestly, and Mitzi didn't thought, do it. No, I thought it was actually like discuss this. Honestly, I have my written notes. I did well, sorry. all of it. You can do it. That's I signed fine. it. Do it. I. It's already 9:30. You want to do it the next? Yeah, day. we can. We can kick it down one. Yeah, I wasn't gonna get to it any time before next week. All right. So we will just table that. Let's see. Takes an F. That's fine. Got <laughs> F's tonight. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't think that was for tonight. Even though it's on there, I really just um, thought it was like, talk about it. I had sent it out two weeks ago. Didn't see so. that email. I mean, I saw it come through, but. Oh, so I, I had a change on these meeting minutes. I, I didn't recuse myself from the discussion. I explained to the group that I had recused myself from the vote relative to the 40B, but that I wanted to take part in the conversation relative to the 40R because I think. Uh, at least in my mind, I in can my make notes, a distinction. I put that, that's okay. And then I yep. did find a typo under overlay. I don't know if Mitzi found any. I didn't even look. Okay. I'm <laughs> being completely <laughs> honest. <laughs> I, I am strung out straight out. So. All right. Listen, you can give us, you have, a, you have five minutes to give us the. Okay. We had a meeting. Do you want to make a motion? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. I move to approve the meeting minutes as amended. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries. Okay. So we had a meeting, regional finance subcommittee. Um, uh, nothing productive came of it other than everybody wants to open their books to see what everybody has for funding sources, um, asked a bunch of questions about whether the schools would ever consider cutting anything from their budget at all, of which they really didn't answer that question talked to them about how we are already in the hole this year um, based upon the increases that were presented at town meeting um, in both towns where the 
I would like for them to explain to people that the approved budget from 1617 to the 1718 budget was actually a much larger increase because they happened to fund an additional $750,000 from E&D during the middle of the year. So in the end, the budget that was approved then um, after a long, lengthy town meeting discussion was really $2 million more than what it was from the previous year. So we go into this next year with a hundred million dollars that the schools had contributed into the funding sources from last year that doesn't exist because their E&D, they say, is $84,000. So they're already a million dollars unable to come up with that fund. Where did the we taxpayer go that had such a hard time with a 40R <clears throat> and being a taxpayer and then he doesn't want to hear the talk about the schools? Yeah, so bottom line is <laughs> there's a funding issue. Schools spent money out of their E&D last year to fund their operating budget to the tune of a million dollars. Um, we brought forth a million dollars last year. Freetown brought forth, you know, eight hundred thousand dollars more last year. So now I would assume they would expect us to make up the money that they don't have, which is another million. So split that between both towns, and then add to that their typical increase, which is at least a million dollars to their budget, which last year was two million. And I don't know where this money is coming from, but they expect us to this solve their problem. This is way worse than not getting a, a subsidy from the state to the tune of $100,000. Yeah, this is millions this of is dollars. This is horrible. That this is a train wreck Yes. for a budget. Yep, it is. This is going to be a, uh, you know, they, they so would like the us to. So what's the plan to, to. I think they would either like us to drain all of our stabilization funds or to advocate for them for an override. We They would like us to solve their problems, of which. I believe that our fiscal policies, which are sound and built on sustainability, um, should be something that they uh, adopt as well. So this this really does leave us in, in a position where we can try to maintain the town budget, the integrity of the town budget, like we tried to at the last town meeting, and plead our case and hope that at the June town meeting, they don't expand the electorate and get some emotionally charged parents in there to support uh, rearranging our budget, it, it, you know, in in taking what they want. Um, there's no. What happened to the to the idea that you were going to work together to dig in and roll up your sleeves and all of that that wonderful talk that was that we heard in this office. Uh, when when Rick was in here yeah, with I, Fred. I don't really see much of it other than they would like to see the books and records of Lakeville, which are completely open, as we always have been, and they'd like to see Freetown because they really just want to... They, but they have what, all that information. Right, but what I think they would like to do is to say that they believe that their department is more important than our other departments and or other things that need to get funded, and therefore we should not fund those things, such as what we talked about earlier, like the culvert the land taking that we will have with Route 79, with the design for Route 79, things that we are going to have to deal with, they would like to take that money for their operational purposes. So, Right, and that's an important thing to point out as well, is that our one-time money that we want to use for projects to enhance the quality of Lakeville, such as your roads or um, funding the, the OPEB liability that was stolen on the town meeting floor and, and other such things, paying down debt. Um, that's one-time money, so to, to, for the schools to request that one-time money to support their operating budget means you're just literally delaying the whole collapse by a year. Um, the other bad thing, I think, is that that then intertwines us with them where we're then desperate because our budget doesn't balance and we need money to fund our operational budget which then makes us become the mouthpiece of an unnecessary override or not an unnecessary override an override that is school specific but then becomes blurred in the minds of, of everybody so that we then become un unwitting advocates for an override that should be championed specifically by the school right and that is a path I choose not to take. Well, I think, you know, one of the things to note <sighs> as well is the fact that if we really were to look at the school budget ever since the last override, I think that putting together a simple document so that we can all discuss it, which would be the school budget and since 2000, 2012, 
that the override passed in 12? If we take their budget and look at the funding sources, state, Freetown, Lakeville, and what came from their own resources and operating funds, um, and look at that year by year by year by year by year, and just calculate the changes, the increases in how much each town and the state and then their own, what they bled from their own E&D, um, to really see what's happened over the past four years or five years, because it's, it's an unsustainable increase that has come from various sources that just don't necessarily exist today. And so we're really faced with a. But, but you've said that time and time again. I've you say that at every, every regional finance committee. You say it at town year, meeting. You say it at selectman every, meeting. Yep. And you might as well be talking to this table. Not the people I, I, at the table. You might as well be talking to the table. I do like the you, table. You make an effort. No, I'm, I'm saying <laughs> I you, make an e you make an effort. <laughs> but, but I think Aaron summarized it pretty well. So if. The, the real point is, is they're trying to get you to be the their spokespiece for the their spokespiece. Yep. And and to me, you the, they're you, neglecting you, their duty the, to they're look neglecting their duty. So yeah. correct. I completely agree. I, I think agree. you should just walk away. Stop wasting your time. Yeah. And so, my suggestion is that you talk to the Freetown cohorts mm -hmm. and 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 George. If we talk about finance committee representation, their finance committee representation, and Bob Jose's representation. Find out if you want to ask them what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And to me, it isn't to say, let's pull back. It's fire and ice. You keep, right. you keep talking one language. Right. They, they're not listening right. at all. Right. And, and, and it's terribly long. frustrating to, to sit there and watch you do that effort. <laughs> I sit there and, I try. and you can do. Yeah. You can say, "Damn it, I'm going to do that the next three meetings, the next five meetings." Yeah, right. Save your breath. Right. S well, save your thunder and, until the town. And meeting. that's a good point because, but then what will happen? And I will just predict it now: is they well, will say that you refused to meet, therefore you weren't communicating with us. You didn't want to hear what we had to say, even though we go to those meetings and they don't want to hear what we have to say. Well, so, um, but that's okay. It doesn't. They're, they're going to say that anyways. Here's yeah, the thing. You don't want to the give them the money. If right. you don't write them a check for two million dollars, you are uncooperative anyways. Right. Right. Exactly. And, and you yeah. don't. And you and not I, doing it for the children. I right. mean, it'll become an emotional thing. Which again, I I want our I want our education system to be it's, the it's, best it can be. I want it to succeed right. and, and exceed expectations. Right. But when we did the override in 2012. We predicted how long would it last? How long would the money Less last? Less than three years, right? and it whistled right through that. Because but, because but I consider what they're doing. We've last got to, town meeting was an override. It was. They it they, was. they took the yeah. money yeah. on to, town floor, to, which was an override. In Freetown, for there conveniently to be three hundred plus thousand dollars, not levied. That was a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Go ahead, take the money. It's laying there for you. I mean, that that was an inside job if I've ever seen one. Well, clearly there's some conflict of interest potentially there. Well, that's either here or there, but but right. that right. plus the the theft at gunpoint at our town meeting is 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 exactly that. It was it was taking money be without the consent of the governing body of the town, not wa working in cooperation, not. There's none of that, so that's fine. If if that's how it is, if if the town wants to elect school committee members who advocate for a, a take no prisoners approach to funding the schools, that's okay. But understand that it will mean that an override will have to come every three to five years to fund. Um, that budget. An out of control budget. Uh, I'm not even going to characterize I it. Will. I'm going to keep it neutral and I'm going to say to fund that that mindset. Yeah. And if the voters of Lakeville and Freetown want to, yeah. you know, occasionally do that um, to, to fund their schools, then, then I'm okay with that. Now, I'm not going to advocate for that. I'm not even going to vote to put it on the town meeting warrant. The school committee can get out there and get the signatures they need to do it, and they can rally the troops, and they can make it work. But to try to, to say that we should be part of that mechanism when our whole approach is the antithesis of that, we have 
capital planning. We have uh, long-term strategies. We have policies. We talk for at length about the need to be fiscally responsible and to, to plan accordingly and to be dealing with, with a, a town department that doesn't take that approach is certainly frustrating, but it's their choice to make, and I'm okay with that. And if the voters of Lakeville are okay with that, and the taxpayers of Lakeville are okay with that, then that's what they get. Um, but I agree with John. I don't think we should be a party to it. Okay. Um, yeah. But I, you can do whatever you want. No, I, I agree with that because all I do is I leave there and I'm completely frustrated because no, 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 everything I have said Life's is... Right. You know, everything I've said, you know, I believe is for the fiscal sustainability of the town. And if they were willing to be able Here's. to control their budget, my concern, too, is that you know, what they had mentioned, which did we ever get a copy of any notification that I had been, you know, named on the negotiating committee of which they've already started and we haven't gotten any notification that they're having we any We meetings. sent them a letter that you were. No, we did, but right. we never got anything back. I don't think we usually do. Okay. Uh, well, they never When they start scheduling the meetings. Which they already I have. Remember Scott, they have. Yeah. So they've already had one, one or two um, scheduling type meetings. But I can't go to the next school committee meeting where they said they would be talking about an executive session. It's on the 25th of November or something, the 15th of November. Um, I will not be around. So um, if one of you wants to go and sit in on the negotiations, they said a substitute would be fine. Yeah, either Aaron or I. You can go. I, I don't want to do it. Did you say November 15th? <laughs> November 15th, yeah. If it'll you be. Want to, I mean, you don't have to. No, what, when is it? November 15th. Oh, that's like years away. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But just make sure you put it on my, yeah. my right. schedule. But did to go. they notify you of the meeting? Just at that regional a, finance committee just, meeting. That's verbally, the only time they said it. Verbally, I yeah, they said, well, oh. you know, you'd be invited, and oh, the first meeting, it's going to be November. And, and I wasn't sure what your role really was going to be. It's not to negotiate. It's not to sit in on negotiation right. sessions. It's to sit in an executive session to discuss how the negotiations are going. And <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I'm happy. I'm happy to go. That I, I'm not so sure how much I'd contribute other than just report back to you. Yeah. And that's fine. The, but your involvement in, in the regional school finance committee, figure it out and just let Aaron and I know what you're going to do. Maybe you right. do want to talk to the other. Yeah, I'll talk to town. Freetown. I, I don't want to. If I do it, then I, you know, I don't. I don't want to read into it and say, oh, this is what's what's in their mind. Ask them whatever questions you want. Mm -hmm decide and you won't break my heart right um, I know that when that that committee subcommittee first worked first functioned it it failed and Dave Davenport was the Lakeville representative uh, yeah. for the school committee and he said this is not a good idea it doesn't function it's not doing well, what it should because of the politics of the culture it's a culture clash the culture right. of the school committee is true. completely different than the board of selectmen and I've and I, you guys know this, and I, big deal. I've been on both. It's it's a, and it's an entirely different mindset. And I'm not even saying I didn't share some of their mindset when I was on that committee. It's funny in life you play these different roles. Um, I di I wasn't. I was maybe sixty forty. Of where I am today, and and they'd say, well, we got to do this, this, and this. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me, you know. But there is a very different culture. That is that is more about supporting what they've got, and, and, and so I get it. I understand that, and, and that's why I say I, I I personally don't agree with it. So I'm not going to necessarily judge it. It's a, it's an right. it's a it's right. an opinion call whether you want to do what you want to allow what's happening with the schools or not, and if the voters don't care. Um, <laughs> if the voters don't care, that's their decision to make. And, and who am I to say whether they're right or wrong? I mean, it's the choice of right. the people to, right. to make that but call. But as we approach that cliff of <laughs> running out of money, we, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the town. 
to be, fight for the to town. To be more convincing, if you will. Well, you, you can't. It, but what you more know, could we do? Well, I mean, we, what right. more could we have done? Right. Honestly, um, we, we did everything we could to try to preserve the integrity of the town budget at the last town meeting. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't. We we don't have the ability to expand the electorate. That's that was the that was the move that won that won them their budget was right, they right. they maybe, rallied the parents right um which again that's that's, that's all that's, that's politics that's politics but if if they want to pay more you know right that's fine they, too exactly. but I, I would just like well, them to admit that they the, would like the, an override right, right. I, I think that sure. you have to you want sure. to break it out They'll and have say, to eventually. say here's what's needed for the schools but they want me to say we need an override right that's why you don't want to go to those exactly. meetings they need to say we realize, which they never will, that you don't have the funding available because they want to look at what's in stabilization, what's in this, what's in this. We'll use that money and fund our budget. We'll which kill is the town. We'll drain exactly. the town down That's to a point where do. we have to lay off emergency well, services personnel. And, right. And you'll have to beg for an override. Right. And what they said. Guess who advocated for the last override? The schools? I don't know. Scott Bellavo. Yeah, no, in conjunction with some parents, <laughs> but remember, so, he was the one who sold us the but, override. But here's the thing. So, I mean, what they had asked of me, which I disagreed with, um, is they said, you have when you come here, you have to take off your selectman hat to have this discussion. They said, I can't do that. Like, that's the point of this is <laughs> to have a there. selectman from each town, yeah. a finance well, committee, because yeah. they want, I don't know if they want me to put on my parent hat or <laughs> what. Like, I don't know what they're asking for. <laughs> But they somehow wanted me to, hockey mask. to right to stop <laughs> saying what I've been saying, which is it's right. not sustainable, and the town right. can't. You know, we're trying to be conservative. So, um, I'm you right. Know, but that's disingenuous for is. them to even ask that exactly. because that's the whole point of having yep. right. a group from different right. angles and, and, and right. You bring resources. your perspectives right. and you right. share in that experience yeah. to so, try to find common ground. So, you so, don't, may, right. so maybe for the next selectmen's meeting, just give us an update on. The status of the regional finance. Yeah, I'll talk to right. Freetown. All right, that was way more than five minutes, but I, I only spoke for five minutes. <laughs> oh, oh, you're gonna pass it to me? Oh no, Aaron well, it, it did took it. on a life of its it. own. We have some old business. This is some very exciting old business. I really think this this is a great a great achievement for this board and and for Rita and and uh, the town offices to to pull this together and even the board of health. Um, Governor Baker signed the special act establishing the Department of Inspectional Services and Permitting in the town of Lakeville. So it happened. The Board of Health relinquished its control to the Board of Selectmen relative to everything. Appointments. It was, it's, uh, that's not why it's great. Honestly, to a certain degree, that, that's kind of a drawback to this whole thing. But the, the benefit of this is, of course, is that we've merged the building department with the Board of Health and the conservation agent, or the conservation agent, under the um, Board of Selectmen so that town residents can now visit one office and deal with all of their permitting. And we have uh, a lot more oversight within those departments from a day-to-day -day basis. It's a big drawback on the Board of Health where they had health agent and some administrative people reporting to part-time elected officials and that of course is not a, a good way to keep things streamlined and, and functioning um, to the best of, of, of delivering services to the community so this is a great day um, or whenever it was actually signed was the great day I'm just reporting on it um, da -da -da. Friday October 6 so that was it um, so good stuff, everyone. Thanks for helping to get that done. And do we have any other business? I would just like to follow up with the committee about the setting that meeting with Gene Fox and the South Coast Rail Team. Right now we had um, October 18th or the 26th. Um, I know that Keiko couldn't. Uh, Mike Roderick could make the 18th. And in the meantime, I've called Rick Cologne about the solar canopies. And on behalf of Secretary Pollock, he's glad to meet with the board anytime. So I didn't know if you wanted to pick one date for, or 
if anybody care. We certainly want to set Jean Fox. Yeah. If she's available the 18th, and we are. Yeah. It's Wednesday. We should forge ahead with that. Yep. I'll yeah, I'm her tonight. I'm good with that. That's why I Eight, probably 18th? had that. Yeah. The 18th. Me yeah. Too. Can that be at 6:30? Is that all right? Because I have a regional fin. Uh, regional fincom. We just talked about that. <laughs> Never having one of those meetings again. Um, <laughs> CDC meeting at 5:30. Um, and then so far on the 26th, I don't have anything for any of the board members, but I don't know if you have. Well, you want to try that one for we're good Rick on the Cologne? 18th. I, I think we're good on the 18th. 18th yep. is good. Eight, 18th for Gene Fox. 6:30. At 6:30, and the and the solo guy is, is different. Do we want to have him in on the on November first? You want to have him on the 26th? Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. Well, the 26th has nothing to do. Right. We could have it on November 2nd because that's when it's regional FinCom meeting. Oh, no, I, you have a selectman's <coughs> meeting November 1st. Right, correct. Did you want to have him put him on that agenda? Do you think, not? I don't know what that agenda is going to look like. It's, um, no, warrant reviews November 8th. Is, um, yeah, I need to see what warrant review. It might not be oh, too bad because you're one, meeting on Mitzi, the 25th. I don't care if it's the 26th or any other day. No, oh, I, I want to make it easy. Yeah, I mean, if we're here and it's we think it can fit in, I'm okay with that. Otherwise, the 26th, I'm free. I don't have anything. You want to give them the 26th of November first? Okay. Two dates. Just to see. May. Yeah. November 26th is okay for us. October. It's oh, October. No, October. October 20. Uh, I'm sorry. November October 26th. Okay. Yeah. Is is uh, w what's his name? Rick Cologne. Rick Cologne. Okay. And I just wanted to update the board. We got our, for the hot police station site, I got my determination of applicability. CONCOM said that um, it doesn't fall under any wetlands. So that was good news. And last Stating thing, obvious. Mitzi, you had wanted me to check um, on our OPEB actuarial. Now with the GASV 74-75, we do have to go back to every two years because okay. we had under 100 employees. It was every three years. But we're not due to have it done again until September 2018. Okay. Because our current report goes through. Okay. What, what, what is that? OPEP. Oh, 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 oh that's right. 20, September 2018. All right. So we're doing it. We're going into executive uh, session, right? Oh, um, well. Is there something on there you want to just under read? the read right. items in case anyone had a question on Middlebarg G&E, they've been talking about doing this legally. Uh, we have to put liens on the tax bills for outstanding uh, electric bills, and there's some pretty big cost. I don't know. Did legally we need to do that? Yes. So we've been meeting with Deb and the so assessors. Legally, they've asked us. Right. To do it. We, no, we don't have to do it. Oh, we right. do. If they're, if the Middleborough G&E votes it. Well. We have, I have an opinion from town council. No, and I don't yeah. think that's a bad idea, honestly. No, I thought they I just mean, shut it off. I don't know why no. they're going for years. No, because there's a lot of reasons they can't shut it off, well, whether it's elderly. Right, but right. there's, they have agreed that there's some $20,000 outstanding bills, and to hit oh, people I, I with think, that I immediately. No, I think so, it's fine. Uh, I've kept the town accountant involved in it, and uh, so we're working on that. Okay. Okay. Should allow the city of Taunton to do the same thing with water. Well, it, it's <laughs> two different statutes, and I believe they can, but it's not under the same statute. I'm with my same exact question, <laughs> Aaron. Okay, so we're going into executive session. Are we doing it? Do we need to? Yes, we town council's waiting to talk to you. Oh right, she phone yeah, we're calling it right. Shouldn't be long, take okay. long at all. Yeah. Okay. I move that we enter into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter thirty A, section twenty one A three to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining, specifically the laborers union, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the board. The chair so declares, I do. 
and pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, for purposes of discussing strategy with respect to litigation in the matter of Trockey v. Lakeville et al., Plymouth Superior Court, CA number 1783CV00700. <clears throat> Holding the meeting in open session would have a detrimental, detrimental effect on the litigation position in the chair, so declares I do in pursuant to MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A7 to comply with open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 22F, approval of executive me session meeting minutes for September 27, 2017, and not to come back into open session my motion. I second. Powderly. Aye. <laughs> Burke. Aye. <laughs> Fallen back. Aye. 